Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome. It's time for the stream to start. At last. We're here. And we're going to play a game called Destroyer. The U-Boat Hunter. Not to be conflated or confused with the U-Boat game that we have already played. This is a totally different game. On the other side of that conflict. We're going to be in a boat above the water, hunting boats below the water, and not the other way around. I hope you guys are having a nice Thursday. You've almost made it through the week just a little bit further, and you'll hit the weekend again. But I hope you guys have been having a nice day. I'm sad to see that this is the last full week of January. Somehow. Already. <laughs> yes, today is boat stream. That's right. It's been a terrible week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't had the greatest week either. I'll be real. I think it's just... I, I don't think there's any one reason in particular... Nothing like tragic or terrible happened to me. I was just, I've just been like struggling, dude. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, it's, it's just a bunch of little things, right? I, I like how I went, oh, it, there's nothing, there's, there, there's really nothing that I can pinpoint. I've been struggling. <sighs> you might remember if you were here yesterday, me saying, or actually two days ago, saying, there was a game I wanted to play that was delayed unexpectedly, which led me to finish our Hearts of Iron campaign, which, first of all, went phenomenal. Phenomenally, I should say. Uh, the end of that Hearts of Iron Spain campaign was chef's kiss. It, I'm, I'm really glad that I did go back to it now in hindsight because it deserved to be concluded because 
Um, if you didn't see the end of the Hearts of Iron campaign, as Carlist Spain, we got to enact the ultimate Carl memes and finish off... Well, we, we contributed to finishing off the UK, which was one of our focus tree objectives to retake Gibraltar and, I guess, conquer the UK. We <clears throat> were a large component in defeating... United Kingdom allies forces in Africa in that campaign. Uh, we also fought Free France and defeated Free France in tandem with the USA, where we culminated our campaign, naval invading the United States of America from Spain and successfully leading millions of troops all along the eastern seaboard of the US, coast to coast, east to west, and defeated uh, the combined forces of the U.S. and Mexico as Spain. Florida is Spanish again easy. So yeah, uh, we, 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 we had a nice finale there. And then Germany stole all of our credit. Yeah, that's true. Germany did steal all of our credit. Yo, what's up, chatters? I just started playing U-Boat. You can't just switch sides to the allies. I can, and I will. I'm doing it now. I'm going to get my own destroyer boat. I'm going to be a little destroyer inside of my own Hearts of Iron Navy, and I'm going to be sailing around looking for U-Boats to blow up. So I imagine today is going to be somewhat of a learning adventure because this is another one of those... If you remember the first U-Boat stream, it's going to be similar to that in that there are all these sort of intricate layered things that you need to do in a specific order and a specific way. And I'm going to have to figure out how. Uh, there's going to be like weird overlays and I, I, I would call them mini games maybe is mini games the right word where you have to figure out how to dot the i's and cross the t's so you can track down as you might imagine being in a boat and pinpointing the location of an underwater submarine is not easy so there's going to be some I, I assume intricate systems it's going to be like solving a puzzle because that's what I noticed from U-Boat. Once you learn how to bop it and twist it uh, in the right order, it's more of a puzzle than anything else. You don't really have, like... It's not It's not super dynamic. Like, you see, you see a boat, you go, what boat is that? So you open your boat book, and you identify, oh, that's probably um, a fuel hauling vessel. A, a tanker. Which one is it? Okay, so now I need to like click this button to measure its speed, do this to measure its distance, and once you've locked all that in, you kind of just like fire and forget and hope for the best. So I think once you learn how to do everything the way that they want you to in the game, you kind of just unlock the ability to, to sink a submarine. So in that sense, these games are not incredibly replayable because it's all about the novelty of figuring out it's like a like okay is it weird to compare these to an escape room you know like if you've solved an escape room before and you know where the keys are and you know how to how everything works together then some of that novelty is lost afterwards the fun part for me is being like okay how does how does one measure the speed of a boat from this periscope and then Un unlocking the knowledge of how those systems work. Once I've learned that, it's not as fun anymore. It's You're kind of just going through the motions, I guess. I mean, you want to succeed as well. I think U-Boat has a lot of extra value in that it lets you follow the camera of the torpedo. So there's a, there's a certain amount of satisfaction in just being like, did I do it right? And then watching your torpedo surge through the waves toward its target and, and either narrowly missing or maybe you got it totally wrong or maybe you got it dead on and then watching him sink. Professor at Annapolis commanding a boat 
is like an escape room. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, in, in video game form, it's simplified so that you're doing every crewman's task, right? So it's it's a little... It's dumbed down for video game. And you can, in the video game form, do it all. If you do it the same way every time, it'll pretty much come out correct. You open your boat decks and you capture the boat. Yeah, you have to know which which one it is. What's up, Colum Monstera? The boy, Rapid Recline, H Star, Hello Secret Warrior, Crazy Rocco, Gilmadesh, Brynjar Bjorn, and everybody else. How you doing? But yeah, um, oh. I got I got totally sidetracked. I don't know where I went off on that tangent. So you remember a couple days ago when I said that there was a game that I wanted to play that got delayed? We're just not going to play that game because apparently it's out on GOG and I didn't know what it was and I assumed it was something more than it is and it's not. You feel, you, are you following me? Uh, it's the B-17 game. I thought it was going to be like a full new game, but it's actually... An old game, but it's not a remake of that old game. It's not a remaster of that old game. It's a redux of that old game, which is like, I, th I think remakes up here, remasters here, and then redux is here. It's like some changes. And it's a really old game. And so it, it it's not exactly what I wanted it to be. If that makes sense. Maybe, maybe it'd make more sense if I showed you what it is. It's a, it's a classic game remastered. They say remastered, but it's actually called a redux. I don't know if I'd call it remastered. It originally came out in 1992. So that's part of the issue, right? It looked like this. So I looked at this, and I looked at this, and I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. I get to like command a B-17 Flying Fortress. But what they don't tell you is that these are all basically JPEGs. Like, th th these are JPEGs with... This is a still image that is not animated in the game. This is a still image that the flat ground kind of just moves in the background. And uh, these guys' heads turn slightly, you know what I mean? Like, these guys basically don't move, and the only thing that moves is the ground underneath them, right? It's, f it's from 1992, so they're just... They're trying to keep the same 1992 game, but with some new textures put on top of it, is what I understand. So it looks really cool, but like, that's a JPEG that doesn't move, that's a JPEG that doesn't move. This is a JPEG, that's a JPEG, that's a JPEG, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's kind of point and click, sort of. It doesn't look the way you expect it to. So anyway, once I, once I watched some gameplay of it and saw that it was like $8 for some reason, uh, that's when I was like, oh, okay, I think I understand what's going on now. The game that you thought this game was would be really cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, if they just made a new game with, you know, animations and graphics, and you actually do have to manage all the dudes in a B-17, and don't chat... Don't talk about that other plane game that doesn't look anything like this that was like five years ago that I did on YouTube. Because someone always throws that out. It's like, you gotta play this game. And I don't remember, I don't even remember which one it is. Now I'm gonna look. Bomber Crew. Yeah, bom Bomber Crew was completely different from what this, what I thought this game is. Vaguely similar. Dude, 90 megabytes of JPEGs? What a deal. But yeah, it's like, it's not very much money. It's like $8. When I saw the price, I was like, hmm. 
Hmm, what is this? Probably not what I think it is. And then I watched a little gameplay of it, and it was like, oh, definitely not what I think it is. So, that game, we're just not going to play, because I don't think it looks like something I want to play. So, I had to cancel one new game that I thought I wanted to do this week, I was excited about. And then I was really excited about Enshrouded, and then played that yesterday. Had a great time playing with Avic. Um, the game itself is lackluster, in my opinion. Didn't doesn't really have anything that would make me want to play it again, I don't think. I, I have no desire to go back. It's more or less uninstalled already. I, I, I was... I think the game itself was kind of boring. And I would say by the numbers. Very, very by the numbers. That's not to say you can't have fun with it. So I know there's a bunch of people out there who are having fun with it because on uh, Steam, it is 5,000 plus reviews deep, very positive right now. So clearly people are enjoying it. Eighty-three percent of the reviews are positive. People love survival crafting games? Yeah, people love survival crafting games. Like, yeah, everybody says the building is really good, but it just seems like Minecraft creative mode to me. You just have to gather your own resources. The reason that I found the building in Valheim so compelling was because I had to work within the systems of the game to build. So the building itself was woven into the gameplay. Uh, I don't really like building in Survival Crafters that is like you have a hologram of a block and that block will more or less float and it doesn't like it doesn't matter. There's nothing like you're just doing it to do it effectively like just for there's, there's no reason to build and enshroud it. You can you can build one room and cram all of the NPCs that you need to rescue into the same room. You just need enough space for your crafting tables, and that's it. And then the people themselves are crafting tables. So, I don't know. I need, like, an emotional attachment to my building. Like, I need to, I need a reason to build, and I need some game systems that govern the building, not just, like, Legos. The Legos, you know? I think that that's a good way to put it. It's like, Legos are fun, but if you just give me a box of Legos, I don't know what to do with that. Like, I, I am not that kind of creative person who just gets a box of Legos and goes to town. Where did streamer go? I got swallowed up by the snow. I had to blow my nose. Twice. Where you're describing seems like the norm in survival crafting games, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think I'd call Enshrouded. I said this yesterday. I wouldn't call it a survival crafting game. It's kind of just a crafting RPG. There's no survival mechanics in it. Other than you drop stuff when you die. That's, that's the only survival mechanic. Truth. Don't joke about that. I have been swallowed up by snow. It sucks. Well, get inside, dummy. Why are you standing out there watching it envelop you over hours? Okay, there we go. Unfortunately, the one thing that Enshrouded did for me yesterday is make me want a new survival crafting game that I actually like. It gave me the itch, like, I do want a giant world that is waiting for me to explore it. And poke around every nook and cranny with a rewarding... ...structured... Um, ...progression system. <laughs> I 
that has like things that you are happy and feel benefited by when you're exploring that has good loot and good skill tree and fun building and oh my god please just erase the mem my memories of Valheim so I can experience it again for the first time when it eventually comes out to 1.0 when I'm um, in my 60s hey maybe you listen all I have to do is like get dementia and then I can play Valheim again when it's finally ready to release What's up, Anua Curry? I have a sick beta fish friend I'm currently nursing back to health. Please send my little buddy your wishes. We give your little beta fish our energies. Take our energies. Thanks for the sub. Having never played Valheim, yesterday's stream made me really want to check it out. Yeah, I mean, you definitely should, but also there's no harm in waiting. Even if, you, if you've missed it this long, I would try and wait until 1.0 comes out one day, and then start it. Start it then. If you've never played it before, it's, it's a really good first experience, especially for survival crafting. Quite magical. I just, like, remember playing it, and <laughs> the best way I can describe it is the games that I, I cherish my the memories of are the ones where they exceeded my expectations, where I just started it thinking, oh, is this going to be another survival crafting game? And then I just kept uncovering new systems and new interwoven gameplay elements. And Valheim was one of those games where I was just impressed... All the way through, pretty much. Everyone speaks of it so earnestly. Yeah, it's just like... Um, the kind of... It's the kind of game that... Loneliness in Valheim is a feature and not um, something that is a negative. I guess those like I, I just loved those super long journeys and voyages. It was a very tough game though, especially solo. Very very like difficult game. I think it would be easier if you had like at least one co-op partner to play through combat wise because a lot of the combat in my solo experience was sort of like running away and figuring out how to get the openings when I'm being chased by like a horde of enemies. The curse of being a jaded gamer, not many things can exceed expectations. Well, I mean, you don't have to exceed my, my expectations are low, dude. <laughs> All you have to do to exceed them is just try to make something that hasn't been done before, bro. When my this expectations is are, is this going to be exactly the same as everything else I've played? And then the answer is yes. It's not because my expectations are high. It's it's because, like, chat, we, we talked about this at length yesterday. But with Enshrouded, it's like, I this is the kind of game where in you, if you ask me about it in a year, I'm not going to remember what its name is. I don't, I won't remember anything about it. It's just a, a blur. It's like a melting pot of every other survival crafting RPG game idea. Like, Pow World, I'll remember because even though I haven't played it, it is in the gamer lexicon now, and it's the Pokemon meme game. Okay, it's so like, I'll remember it because there's something there that is like a noteworthy point about it. So like, even though I haven't played it, I understand Pound World's novelty. 
and I don't plan to play it because it's just not novelty that I'm interested in. But it has novelty. I wonder what the next big thing will be in gaming. It's Pal World. It's Pal World. <laughs> we already found it, <laughs> for better or worse. Pal Pump It World. I wouldn't even say it had an especially unique visual style. I mean, in Shredded, it looked nice. It just ran it just ran really poorly on my, my computer. But yeah, it just made me really hunger for a new survival crafting RPG because I just realized it's been three years since I played Valheim, and that's the last one that I really liked. And and then it boggles my mind that it's been three years, and then I get into a vicious cycle of where did the time go? It was 2021. Which is wild. But yeah. There there will be more stuff that comes out this year. But uh we we, we ha I've had a few swings and misses post post subathon. Stationers for me was a swing and miss. Um, the Enshrouded was a swing and miss, and then this B-17 game didn't, wasn't the game I thought it was swing and miss. Eventually, look, I don't need much, I just need to hit a single right now. So maybe, baseball terms, maybe Destroyer is that single that we're looking for. Let's check it out. I'm trying, I'm trying new things, chat, okay? Is this a new game? It's new to you, isn't it? It's new to me. <laughs> we just need someone on base, please. Just, yeah, we just need to get a runner on base, that's all. We just need a shot. Right, right now, 2024 new games for me uh, they're they're pitching a perfect game right now against me. We we got I just gotta break up the perfect game. And it's almost the end of January. There's a lot of at least interesting looking survival games in the next two quarters. What survive what what survival games? There are no games that I know of and I'm not exaggerating. We've looked this up multiple times. The only game that I'm interested in so far that I that has a confirmed 2024 release date is Final Fantasy. Uh, there's two. Final Fantasy 7 Part 2, whatever that is, and um, Flight Sim 2024. I don't know any other games. Those are the only two that have confirmed 2024 release dates. I'm, I'm very hopeful for Flight Sim 2024. Now, there is a small, small worrisome attribute that Destroyer U-Boat Hunter has shown me, which is the options menu. This is it. This is all the options. Your graphics can be performance, low, mid, or high. Good luck. Also, it mutes whenever I alt tab. I am hopeful for Manor Lords. Eh, I'm not. I played the demo. I don't see it. I don't see it. Manor Lords is going to be the Enshrouded of Banished Likes. I'm, I'm happy to be wrong, and I'll probably play it when it comes out. 
but I didn't like the demo. It was it was very by the numbers. Hold on, another game in which I build a building and someone works in it to produce a resource that's used in another resource chain? What? Are you serious? <laughs> it doesn't seem like Banished at all. Really? Have you played Banished? <laughs> no, no, I have not played Banished. Uh, from the Steam page on Manor Lords, resource management. From boots to barley to hides to honey, Manor Lords features a great variety of goods fitting of the era. Materials need to be transported and processed into finished products through production chains. And you must balance the basic needs of your people against the desire to produce luxury items to ensure happiness. Manufacture trade goods for export or forge arms and armor to aid in your conquests. Resources are littered across the map. Extract valuable ores from your mining colonies. There's supposed to be combat. I know there's supposed to be combat. I've seen videos of it and it's gonna be terrible, okay? I'm telling you now. I don't trust any banished like game. Just like, for example, for example, the best banished like that currently is in development is, without a doubt, in my opinion, Farthest Frontier. And it also has combat, and it, the combat is the worst part of the game. Farthest Frontier is a fantastic banished like that's not done. The combat's awful, though. I'm still looking forward to 1.0 because Farthest Frontier is actually super fun. It's it's f so much fun that it exceeds the lackluster combat. Yo, is this Ano baby? Did you see X4 is getting a new DLC in 2024? I did. Chad, I'm gonna shit on everything today, and I don't care. The new X4 DLC looks like trash. <laughs> uh, and I love X4, man, but I'm so disappointed in their new DLC direction. Gaming is over. I'm not even joking, seriously. I got, okay, let me show you why. Let me show you why. Okay. Here's the DLC. Here's the DLC page. It's X4 timelines. The, here's a problem. The whole point of X4 timelines is that timelines is basically like an alternate play mode. You have to select timelines from the main menu, and then you set forth on adventures that transcend time and space. So you have to do out of campaign storylines that are all just like el elaborate quests and you'll apparently unlock some things for your campaign so it has nothing to do with the actual sandbox mode which is the entire reason why i like x4 I just want to see sandbox changes to make the sandbox more fun. I, I I appreciate that they went out of their way to put some story quests in the sandbox, but to be honest, all of the storylines are really bad, and the voice acting is really bad, and I endure it because the rest of the game is so ambitious and fun that it's okay to have other story things in there and have some people like them but it's goofy as hell. And so now that they're making an entire DLC s s around that, and nothing that changes the sandbox except for a couple of like unlocks that you get for having to do all those quests, 
and they're not fixing any of the issues that I perceive with the sandbox because they didn't listen to me specifically. Okay, I know better than everyone on their forums. But yeah, it's... Playing these scenarios will also unlock new missions within the X4 timeline storyline and bonuses for your X4 sandbox universe. So you'll get some new ship skins, I guess. So that's why I'm not excited about the new DLC. I'm trying, I, I know that I sound, what I sound like. I know I'm just old man yells at Cloud right now. I understand. I gotta do tutorials. Let's go. The Battle of the Atlantic took place in the 1940s. During that time, most U-boats were still It looks as bad for me as it so does for you on the compression here. For long periods of time. Therefore, you're very likely to detect them on the surface using radar before they close in for the attack. Once a U-boat submerges, you can no longer detect it using radar, and you will have to use sonar instead. Unlike radar, the sonar of the 1940s had to be pointed in the appropriate direction in order to detect the enemy. Bear that in mind when you lose radar contact with the enemy, and, most importantly, remember this. Radar works only for surfaced contacts, while sonar works only for submerged contacts. Last but not least, the 1940 sonar also has a dead zone right under your destroyer, which is crucial to remember. The most important thing you need to understand, however, is that everything at sea is ruled by the compass. Consequently, every instrument, report, and command also oh. refers to it. It works don't have just a... like the clock, with 000 or 360 at the top, 090 These subtitles, right. though. 180 at the bottom and 270 on the left. These three digit codes are called the left. bearings and they refer to the cardinal points. That is not zero, port, zero, Chad, zero, that is left. Or 360 is the north, 090 is the east, 180 is the south, the subtitles are covered. 270 <laughs> is the west. So, if there is a contact at bearing 090, <laughs> it means that it is located east of our position. This system allows the crew to quickly exchange information regarding where the enemy has been detected, what course to take, and so on. Why do the water textures change it, closer it to the ship? It becomes second nature. In summary, the most important information for you will always be the position of the currently tracked enemy, which is given in bearings. Which direction? In ranges, how far away from your position? Depth charge. The last thing you need to know is how to execute a successful depth charge attack. The problem consists in hitting a moving object in 3D space with a weapon that has a considerable delay between being fired and hitting the target. Kaboom. Got him. In general, the attack has to be made in such a way as to drop the depth charges with a lead ahead of the U-boat's bow. What is more, one tap depth charge fuse must be set for shallow, medium, or deep. Bear in mind that the deeper you set the fuse, the longer it takes the depth charges to reach the set depth. Sure. The optimal time to drop depth charges is calculated by an analog computer called oh, yeah. the Tactical Range Recorder. It measures the speed of closing the distance between your destroyer and the target, and will help you to decide when to give the order to fire. Because of that, pay close attention to what the tutorial says about using the TRR, as it will make the difference between success and failure. They love blowing up submarines in reality. In the chances of hitting a U-boat with depth charges were rather slim, but due to the devastating effects that even close misses had on the submarine's morale, 
harassing and suppressing the U-boat was often enough to make its crew abandon further attack attempts, at least for some time. Now that you understand the most essential facts about anti-submarine warfare in the Second World War, you can proceed with the tutorial. Okay, this wasn't even the tutorial. This was the tutorial for the tutorial. Um, let's be over here for now. Welcome to the tutorial. The bridge is where you control the destroyer's maneuvers. Let's start with changing the ship's speed, which you do through the engine order telegraph. Uh, click on ahead standard to increase speed. We're sailing at ahead one third at the moment. All engines ahead standard. All engines ahead standard. Aye, sir. Who said that? I said that. Yes, that's the way to do it. Observe how our speed is rising from eight knots to 25 knots. I want Evil Etal to read all these tutorials. There are more speed options to choose from, however. Remember that at a head full and a head flank, you won't be able to use the sonar. You can also control the engine order telegraph from any station by clicking on its representation on the left or using W and S and then enter. Okay, what do you want me to do? Uh, ahead one third to proceed. All engines ahead one third. All engines ahead one third. Aye, sir. The least enthusiastic captain. The compass is currently showing course zero 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 magnetic north. Courses relate to bearings, so if your course is zero, that means you are heading exactly northward. There are a few ways to steer. The first is the helm, which works just like steering wheels in cars. Click the left mouse button and drag fully to the left. Hard left rudder. Hard left rudder. Aye, sir. That was the helmsman talking. No, it's the captain, then the helmsman. Shut up. There's two voices. I don't know if you heard that, but it's two different people. Observe how the helm indicator has changed position. Excellent. We are now turning left. Left. Not port. Another way to steer is by clicking on the helm indicator. This is very useful for keeping the destroyer turning at a given radius. Try making a 35 degree turn. Hard right rudder. Hard right rudder. Aye, sir. Now center the helm by clicking zero. Steady as she goes. Aye. Steady on course. Three, three, one. Three, three. <laughs> oh, man. You didn't pay someone to read all 360 numbers? That would be a lot of individual lines. I'd do it. I would do that. That would be some legit voice acting. Use the A and D keys to select and enter and confirm. Okay, steer from any station. What do you want me to do? 20 degrees right. Rudder, 20 degrees right. Rudder, 20 degrees right. Aye, sir. Well done, another convenient way to change course is to click on the compass on the left. You can either click along the circumference. Chad, I'm gonna move real quick up here for now. So you can read. The ship otherwise is completely silent, which is interesting. Okay, uh, click on the circumference and select, or you can press enter, type the course, and then confirm it. Click the, on the current course, input 010, and then enter. New course, 010. Course, 010. Aye, sir. Good, now you know all about maneuvering, let's move on to attacking. Enemy U-boat is detected. To Surface attack... Surface radar has a new contact. Bearing, 0, forward, 5. Forward? Range. 2,900 yards. Bridge combat. New surface contact from radar. Bearing 045. Range 2,900 yards. I designate contact. Able. Time 08. I feel like I need to. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. Okay, they're going to keep updating five. me. Range, <laughs> I, can't, I can't read while yards. radar is speaking to me, bro. Hold on. Enemy U-boats detected to attack it. Let's take a look at the target bearing indicator. 
This is useful as it displays our ship's silhouette, the current target bearing in relation to it on the rotating ring, as well as magnetic north Contact. Able. <laughs> the now three lines zero, from the center. Four, what? Four. Range 2,600 yards. This is the target bearing. And magnetic north, the three lines extending from the center. This is magnetic north. This is the target bearing. A quick glance is all you need. If your target bearing is aligned with the bow of the ship's silhouette, Contact, you're now then you're steering the right way to pursue your target. Additionally, the radar man is now regularly reporting the target data. I hear him, yeah. I'm, I muted those guys. Let's use these coordinates as well as the target bearing to close the distance and get within 2,000 yards of the target. Give it a try. Increase your speed and steer so the contact able is in front of you. Listen to the radar man and adjust course to match what he says or watch the bearing indicator and align the target bearing with the bow. Okay. What are they, what are they saying now? So all I need to do is adjust bearing to like 35 degrees. New course. Contact able now bear. Don't zero, listen. Four, one, would the range, radar ever speak over the captain? Yards. Why would he speak over the captain? He just he they would they they can't hear my course. Helmsman apparently somehow sussed it out. Um and then we need to increase our speed to full. All engines ahead full. All engines ahead full. contact Hi, sir. able <laughs> now bears. Radar's zero, crazy. Lower, zero range 2600 yards. Okay, see now the now it's at um ten degrees. Can this go off the screen? Contact able now bears zero three niner range two thousand five hundred yards. New course zero three nine. Course zero three nine. Aye, sir. Okay, I mean I'm I'm doing it. I'm matching it. We're we are perfectly lined up with the target bearing up there, and I'm at full speed Contact ahead. Contact able now bears zero three seven range two thousand three hundred yards seven. course zero three seven aye sir. Okay, so we're gaining on him now. All engines ahead one third. All engines ahead. One -third. You probably aye, need sir. more Steady steering practice, but aye. let's move on. Wait, hey, whoa, three, what? Seven. Bro, Contact I'm gaining on him right now. Zero, three, four, okay, I gotta mute two. you nerds again so I can read the damn tutorial. Whose idea was putting the tutorial? Like, pause the game while this is up, man. In any case, a good tip for beginners is to listen to the bearings given by the radar man and steer accordingly. Same course as the given bearing. Following that course is the easiest way to get close to the enemy. Once you begin approaching, it is time to start tracking the submarine. Before we leave the bridge, take a look around by holding left mouse button and moving the mouse. What? Okay, but well, that was, they won't let me move it again. Right, now let's move on to combat information center and take a look at the equipment used for tracking the enemy. Contact able. All right, the radar man's gonna drive me freaking insane, man. Niner. Range 1,900 yards. Like, why, I don't know. I'm going to mute him. The radar shows surface contacts, so you may want to take a look at it any time. It, okay, sorry. Shows surface contacts. Look at it whenever you need up-to-date picture of the situation on the surface. You can use the radar to check your position in relation to the convoy, as well as the current escort position and surface U-boats. You can zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel and move the camera by pressing the wheel. Move the camera by pressing the wheel. The the wheel. Okay. Uh click on DRT to continue. Chat. Oh, down here. The dead reckoning tracer will help you plan maneuvers in relation to the enemy. The moving lights under the glass surface represent our destroyer. Contact. 
and has bearings on its outer circumference to help you decide what course to take. The dots represent our destroyer's position and the crosses represent the U-boat's position. You can plan your maneuvers observing how the positions change in relation to each other with the passage of time. These are two scales you can switch between. <clears throat> Uh, as soon as the enemy is below 1,000 yards, we recommend you switch to the 1 to 100 yard scale. You can drag the moving light by holding the left mouse button. Okay. You can zoom in and out, as well as scroll the camera by using the mouse scroll wheel. I didn't get to finish reading it. It, it automatically went to the next tutorial. Uh, using the DRT manually can be a lot of fun for seasoned naval warfare vets, but quite difficult for new players. Therefore, the DRT autopilot is active by default. You can always change your settings by pressing escape and deactivating autopilot in options. To learn all about DRT, open options and click the question next to DRT autopilot. Now you know all about the DRT. We can shoot the guns. Okay. Shoot the guns. Stand by the fire. The gun director has the optics and radar system to control the main 5-inch gun battery. Look around through the optics by holding down the left mouse Contact. Able. Now The left mouse button and moving the mouse around. Shooting at surface it certainly is a choice to do the whole tutorial with the radar guy screaming at you. Uh, shooting at a surfaced U-boat will cause it to dive. You can even damage it with a bit of luck, but most U-boat captains will order a crash dive the moment you start firing. Let's try shooting a few rounds. Click on Radar Aim to aim the gun battery at the currently engaged target. Start tracking contact. Target acquired. Horror movie noises in the background. Okay, space bar to fire. Fire. Contact able. Now bears zero, zero, niner. Range 2,100 yards. Target bearing zero, zero, nine. Range 2,100 yards. You can also change ammo and fire star shells into the air. They are illumination rounds to increase your lookout's range of vision. If you can't find the U boat with radar or sonar but suspect it's close and preparing an attack, try launching Contact star shells. Able. Chances are that your lookouts will spot the periscope feather and save the day. Click here to change rounds. Boop. Load illumination rounds. Illuminate. Zero, zero, seven. Cool. Target bearing. Zero, zero, five. Range. 2,100 yards. Last but Contact not least. Able. Shut up. Last but not least is the searchlight. You can turn it on and off. It'll illuminate the enemy periscope for the lookouts, assuming you can find it. Once you illuminate the periscope, the searchlight will snap to it, and you will receive reports from lookouts as long as they can see it. Now that you know how to use the gun director, let's go to the sonar room. Three. Okay. Range. 2,200 yards. Shh. Let's take a look at the sonar console. The thing to note here is the round plate with bearings. Lost contact. Shh. The round plate with bearings that you can use to control the sonar head. Simply click on the sonar indicator and drag it to rotate left or right to choose what to... I just got an achievement for hearing my first sonar contact. I haven't done it. I haven't done anything yet. Hundred yards. Okay, um, let's try searching for a contact. I think we already found one. Uh, if you find combat sonar contact able now bears you're so zero, good at this zero, game. <laughs> zero range two thousand one hundred yards. Let's try searching for a contact. If you find a U-boat, the sonar operator will immediately start reporting on it, and will keep tracking the target as long as possible. Drag the indicator. To bearing 345 to check if there's a U-boat lurking. Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. But three, why? Why am I choosing five, that? Eight, no luck. Rain, Keep on searching. 2, yards. 
Combat sonar. A more effective way to find a U-boat is to order a 90 degree or 180 degree search arc. This is much more convenient than searching manually, but remember you still need to set the direction of the indicator first and then order a search arc. The captain, perform active search. Two, nine, eight, two, zero, two, eight. Active search. Two, nine, eight, through, zero. Two, okay, so eight. this is our active Eyes sonar. Sir. Combat sonar. Regain contact. Able. Bearing. Three. Five. Five. Range. Two thousand yards. Sonar. This is the captain. Perform active search. Three. Zero. Seven. Two. One. Block. Combat sonar. Lost contact. Able. Okay, you guys gotta shut up so I can read. Yes, we've got something. It's probably the one we spotted on the surface. Now observe the window in the upper right part of the console. This is a small tactical range recorder. The window in the upper right. This? <clears throat> uh, by looking at it, you can see whether you are going toward or away from the target. If the graph is leaning left, you're getting closer. If the graph is leaning right, we're moving further away. The last important element is the round CRT display on the left. Here you can observe the bearing drift, i.e. how strongly the target is moving left or right. While this isn't crucial information, it can help you determine your next maneuver. The last option at sonar is your bearing mode, either true or relative. The default is true bearing mode, where 000360 is always north. However, when you switch to relative, the ships now be... Okay, yeah, I understand. Uh, bearings are given in, the re in relation to it. Relative bearings are very convenient once you start approaching the target, but you do not have to use that option. Okay, I get it. Before we leave, please remember sonar won't work at speeds above head standard. Okay. Combat. Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. One. Six. Range. Seven hundred yards. Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. One. Five. Range. Seven hundred yards. Estimated depth. Shallow. Sonar, shh. This device is similar to the bearing indicator you learned about on the bridge. Here, you can mark the current U-boat position in order to track how it is changing with time in relation to your destroyer. Because of that, the OSC is very useful during the last stage of the attack. The line extending from the center of the ship's silhouette, this thing, uh, marks where the sonar is pointing, therefore, Whenever the sonar has contact, you can immediately see which direction it is located. In terms of distance, each ring denotes 100 yards. Okay. This device, like the DRT, can be used manually or in autopilot. The auto plot? The, oh, sorry, auto plot, not autopilot. Probably the same thing though. The auto plot is turned on, so you can concentrate. What well, you can concentrate 100% on your maneuvers. If you wish to deactivate it, press Escape, open the settings. Okay, and you can disable that. You can also learn about the OSC by clicking the question mark to the right. Now that you can track the enemy at close range, let's learn how to arm and fire depth charges. I don't, I don't feel ready, but okay. Uh, tactical range recorder. Tactile range recorder requires two pieces of information to work. The speed of your destroyer combat sonar contact, and the depth able now. and the depth of the U-boat. These two parameters need to be set on the scale here. We are now heading toward the U-boat. The course and speed have been set automatically for the tutorial. To drop depth charges, we must first ready them. Prepare a shallow pattern. Let's select the narrow destructive spread. Our depth charges are being armed, which takes a while. If necessary, you can change parameters before launching the barrage. As with a lot of devices in the game, the TRR works automatically by default, but you can also use it manually. <sighs> okay. Uh, once depth and speed are set, you should rotate the transparent plexiglass piece so that its red lines align with the graph drawn. Chat, remember when I told you that these games are escape rooms? Remember? Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. Three. 
two, seven, range, 500 yards. Wake on right cut. The plexiglass has to be aligned with the graph this way. For the purposes of the tutorial, this is done automatically to see how to do it All correctly. Ahead, what? Two -thirds. All engines ahead, two thirds. Then give the Hi, order sir. to fire. I don't even know what I just did. Combat sonar, contact, able, now bears, zero, three, six, range. Give the order to fire as soon as the graph's left side shows beneath the dotted line. Very important. The screenshot to the right shows an example of when to fire. What? What the hell did this just... Oh, it's turned a different direction. I don't... I have no idea what this is. This is the only thing, actually, that I haven't understood so far. Bears, zero, three... Six, range, 200 yards, bearing steady. Yeah, this is the only one that doesn't make sense to me. There seems like there's an actual explanation right here. Three, two, combat sonar, one, contact, able, now bears, fire, two, one, I, five, I have no idea why now, 30 yards. Bearing steady. Combat sonar. Lost contact. Fire Able. two. Last bearing. Two. One. That was six. good. Last range. 100 yards. Fire three. <laughs> that was good. Um, you can observe the results in the window. You can disable the view for more realism and toggle the damage info on and off. Yeah, oh, sorry, the picture's behind me! The explosions are... Dude, there's nowhere... The whole screen is taken up. All I see is italics at the top right. There were some booms, okay? The submarine is, took some regular damage, apparently. I Okay, but I don't really understand this. Below the very first line. What? This is the... Is this the first line? Good job. Now on to the next part. No going back. You fired because the markings reached the dotted line leftmost on the this portion. Okay, I, I I I know what you're saying, but I don't understand why that how that matters, but okay. Um lookouts. These posts give you the best view for maneuvering when you're in close range to the convoy. Your Surface look radar has a new contact. Your lookouts will warn you of possible collisions and they can spot periscopes and torpedo wakes if visibility permits. They'll also report on oil slicks and debris, which are signs of hits scored against a U-boat. At night, your star shells and searchlights from the gun director can increase their effective spotting range. You can look freely around by pressing and holding the left mouse button and moving the mouse around. You can also click binoculars. All right, go back to combat. Contacts. This station lists all the enemy contacts that have been detected as well as their most recent info. This can be quite useful, especially if you've lost contact and want to reestablish it later. It's also where you select the contact you wish to engage. This contact will be reported on regularly. Any remaining contacts will be reported on only when contact is lost or regained or when attacks are made. Moreover, the DRT and OSC stations will track only the selected contact and the gun director will target it when you engage radar aim. <sighs> all right. My capacity for learning all of Twilight Imperium or Gloomhaven's rules in one go um, I'm starting to hit capacity for maximum amount of information that I can remember simultaneously to put into practice before I become the... Let's just start playing, and I'll, I'll learn how what the rules are as we go. You need to wipe your brain.
this guy didn't go to U-Boat Destroyer School. Because, like, I want to do the manual stuff, but there's not a tutorial for them. They're sort of just, like, go into the settings, turn on manual, and then hit the question mark, and then read more. It'll make more sense when you start using this stuff in combat. It's a bit overwhelming at first. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand. Click the target you want to track. That, I understand. We have two contacts. Select Baker. B. Good, we're now focusing on contact Baker, so all regular reporting and plotting will switch to it. Remember to always select the contact you wish to engage here. Yeah, yeah. Tactical. I, I hate that I have to play with the game muted for the majority of the time because he's, I just yards. unmuted, and these guys are just, like, chatting. They're just, like, so chatty, dude. The tactical Surface station... radar has a new contact. The tactical station, like, is that going to be the whole game? <laughs> Are they just going to be talking the whole game? Because I can't, like, you can't stream because I have to talk. And if there's just dudes talking the entire game, then I can't talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> Zoom call from hell. Two, six, zero. Range, 4,400 yards. Maybe I can just turn down the voices? Maybe. All right, I'm going to mute them for now. This is big picture. It allows you to command the remaining assets in your force. Our destroyer's call sign is Bloodhound. Antler, Mountie, Hockey, and Maple are the remaining ex escorts. And Black Cat is your air support, available temporarily. Depending on the size of the battle, all four remaining escorts may not be present. Our destroyer Bloodhound is located in the center. Your escort units are yellow circles and convoy ships are represented by yellow dots. Enemy U-boats will appear as red crosses along with their contact letter and the time their position was plotted. Note that this station is updated every 60 seconds, representing that a single person would need time to draw all the updated positions by hand. Man. To command an escort, first click to select it. And then click anywhere on the board to relocate the ship to that location or the latest enemy position to attack. Let's try relocating Antler. Okay, click Antler. And then click here. Mounty. Here. Mounty is now on its way to attack. Um, Contact B. Okay. When you select an escort, you can adjust its sonar search arc by clicking on it to change its width or by dragging it with the left mouse button to change direction. Maple. Adjust the sonar arc by clicking on it or by dragging it. Okay, there we go. Good job. Maple is now searching the assigned search arc. Adjusting the search arc will come in handy to find lost contacts. If you attack a contact with two escort ships or assist another escort in their hunt, the chances of success rise exponentially. A well-coordinated attack can be much more effective as the two ships exchange plot information if any of them lose contact, but it's important to watch out for collisions and avoid concentrating too much of your force on one enemy. The last asset at your disposal is air support. It can execute a depth charge attack, but once the payload is dropped, it can still harass U-boats with machine guns. Its presence alone will make U-boats dive to avoid potential attacks. Let's see how it works. All right, Black Cat, go there, I guess. Uh, click on Contact C. What? The downside of air support is that it's only available for a limited period of time. Pay close attention to radio traffic and watch for messages. It'll let you know when it's approaching your convoy so you can take that into consideration when planning surface attacks. You can also pick survivors from merchant ships that you have lost. This allows you to reclaim half of the points you have lost. Uh, Black Cat is attacking Contact ships, Charlie. to avoid. Sergeant Sullivan is sinking. Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. Periscope. What? Okay, um... Picking up survivors can be done both by your destroyer and other escorts. 
They are marked on the map with green dots with a life bar to represent their status to pick Blood them up. Hound. This is Black Cat. Drop death charges on some. To pick up survivors, approach them carefully and stop your destroyer within 150 yards. A progress bar will appear to the left to let you know rescue is in process or progress. Be careful not to ram them. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know how to steer this ship, barely. How? If you leave the survivors in the water, some of them will drown. This is represented by the survivor's health bar. The quicker you take the surviving men of the water, the chance, better chance you have of regaining your lost points. They can be re rescued by remaining escorts. Select an escort and click on the survivors. Okay, um, Maple. Go get them. Maple's going. Before we finish, there's one more crucial information. Okay, what? Take a look at how all the devices... At all the devices that use the bearing system, they all essentially show the same thing. A ring of bearings with your destroyer in the center. Therefore, the most essential skill is to learn to cross-reference and compare data between stations. For example, if you lose radar or sonar, quickly switch over to the DRT and it will tell you where to search with the sonar. When maneuvering around the convoy, you should get in the habit of checking the tactical station and the radar. All these devices serve different purposes, but they utilize the same system. They are your eyes and ears. Use them well and you will always know what's going on around you. Ignore them and you will quickly get lost in the chaos of battle. Now you know everything you need to know to play Destroy the U-Boat Hunter. Good luck! It's easy, there chat. There are three elements that are absolutely crucial to U-boat tactics. Speed, flanking, and the element of surprise. Let's begin with speed. A submerged U-boat is roughly as fast as the convoy, so it cannot effectively catch up on it from behind. It would first need to surface to make more speed, yet at the cost of being attacked by escort gunfire. Therefore, the most dangerous kind of enemy is the clever U-boat captain who approaches submerged from the front of the convoy, maintaining the element of surprise, unless you detect him with the sonar. Most enemy captains, however, will approach the convoy on the surface, for reasons already mentioned in the ASW-101 video. As for flanking, torpedoes had the highest chance of hitting the target when fired at the so-called broadside, i.e. not at the bow or the stern of the target, but at its side which made for a much larger target. If you allow a U-boat to assume a flanking position within 1,500 yards of the convoy and give it enough time at periscope depth, they will be able to shoot whole salvos of well-aimed torpedoes, potentially sinking a few merchant ships in one fell swoop. Also, the Wolfpack tactics used by U-boats were based on advantage in numbers in an attempt to swarm and overwhelm the escorts by attacking from multiple directions at the same time. This was supposed to create a shock effect and confuse the escorts by creating chaos and giving them more targets that they could handle at a time. In order to help you prevent that, here is a handful of tactical advice. Okay. The best area for U-boats to attack from are the convoy flanks. Prevent them from sneaking into good firing positions, and convoy survivability will rise exponentially. So just don't get shot. U-boats approaching submerged from the front of the convoy we can be a nasty surprise. Whenever possible, maintain at least minimal sonar coverage aimed towards the front of the convoy. If you manage to attack and suppress a U-boat long enough, it will stay submerged and will eventually end up behind the convoy. If that is the case, it will be almost impossible for it to catch up without surfacing, and its threat will have been nullified, at least for some time. Try to attack U-boats as far away from the convoy as possible. However, once they break through, make sure to recall your escorts, close the formation, and aggressively defend the flanks. The U-boats will attempt to exploit any holes in your defenses to get there and fire multiple torpedoes. So if any U-boats break through into this zone, attack them with all your might, or their torpedoes will start to wreak havoc in the convoy. Sooner or later, <laughs> you will be able to determine the main vector of the attack. Once that happens, relocate more escorts there from the other flank of the convoy as soon as possible. Okay. Bear in mind that such formation changes will take a while, so try not to jump the gun as it may cost you a lot of time later to reverse a bad decision. Whenever possible, attack a U-boat with more than one ship. Also, try coordinating your attacks with other escorts. Just watch out for collisions and you will be fine.
If multiple U-boats break through and swarm the convoy flanks, chaos will ensue and you will start losing ships. Don't panic and stay on your toes, as this is the most difficult time of the battle. When it comes, make sure your escorts are prioritizing the right targets. How do I know what the right targets are? Entanglement. If you make it through this difficult part, you will most likely succeed in suppressing and repelling the enemy. If you start losing ships, don't panic. You mentioned Check that. Check the radar or the tactical station in combat. Deduce where the torpedo may have come from and make a strong presence in the area to prevent the U-boat from taking further shots on the convoy. Uh-huh. Use air support to harass U-boats that are beyond your reach or quickly relocate it to suppress multiple U-boats when they get dangerously close to the convoy's flank. Remember that air support will force a U-boat to submerge, yes. thus preventing it from firing its torpedoes. Some U-boat captains will submerge and hide under the convoy, or even try to sneak to the other flank. This is a bad situation for you, as it is very dangerous to track and attack U-boats within the convoy due to a high probability of collisions. And lastly, be aggressive and do not let the enemy take the initiative. The longer you hesitate, the more time you are giving the U-boats to reach optimal firing positions and aim their torpedoes. Harass them, never let up, and focus all your assets to the fullest. That concludes the presentation of U-boat and escort tactics. Woo! Okay, gamers. <laughs> I hope you were taking notes. Basically, we're screwed, is what I'm understanding. Career mode comprises nine missions whose goal is to get subsequent convoys across the Atlantic. Each mission consists of several battles against U-boats attacking your convoy. After the last battle of each mission, your performance will be evaluated by the Commodore. Next, you will be assigned a new, more demanding mission, and the results will determine your career score. Okay, let's let's just start on normal mode. Now, they mentioned that there were a number of things that I can now not find. Um, where are the like difficulty? Let's turn the speech down like a lot. Where where are like the manual versus not manual things? I don't know. Also, chat, give me just one second, okay? This is this is gonna be very, very, very quick beer beep. One second.
Okay. He said he's not coming back. Um. Maybe it'd be better to do like just a demo small battle. Large battle, 30 ships? Oh, the convoy's nine ships, the escort screen's two. About one hour. Random time of day, course, and weather. Maybe it'd be better to, to like, just do one of these. <clears throat> Determine the difficulty level of the game. Ah, okay. Battle variant, attack, ambush, rescue, ice field, broken formation, endurance. Let's just... I feel like I need to learn how to steer first. Depth charge efficiency, realistic. Wolf pack size, large, small, medium. Can we just start small? As a, as a tutorial, as a demo? To see how this is going. Surface radar has a new contact. Bearing Noom. zero, niner, two. Range, 5,000 yards. Bridge combat. New surface contact from radar. Bearing zero, nine, two. Range, 5,000 yards. I designate contact able. Time, seven, six. Contact able now bears zero. Niner, four, range, 4,700 yards. So you already start knowing where they Look are? At anything at zero, nine, four. I guess because this I is a pitched nothing. battle. Bearing, zero, nine, four. That guy's panicking already. <laughs> that dude's already in a full panic. Contact, able. Radio, bears, captain. Zero, Send a report to convoy five, commodore. Range, Jansen has unknown contact on yards. radar. Front of the convoy. Contact, able, coming in much more strongly. I evaluate as a definite contact. I don't see anything, sir. Captain I. Captain I? Officer of the deck, Captain E general quarters. to you. Set general quarters, I. General quarters, general quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Set conditions, zebras, <laughs> Go ship. pro Contact, game. <laughs> able. Stern depth charge, detail, Zero. manned and ready. Nine, Main battery seven, ports, manned and ready. You guys need to get, stop, stop, stop holding down the walkie-talkie, okay? Boilers online, max speed 32 knots. Electric plant split, all fire pumps online. Only one Very person well. on comms. Contact, able, now bears. Zero, niner. Niner, range 3,700 yards. Okay, chat, I don't remember a single thing that we're supposed to do. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna listen to the radio guy. Uh, contact able now bears 099. Okay, let's, let's start by going to 099. Contact able now bears 101, one, range 3,500 yards. All engines ahead standard. All engines ahead standard. Aye, sir. Okay, so we're, we're pumping the speed. And we're turning right now. I like this little window screen in here. Just remember your training. This is why this Contact is... Contact. Able. Now. It didn't remember that. Oh, this is the automatic plot. Okay. No. Uh, we'll consider testing this after we do the basics the first time. Depth charge camera, oh yeah. I'm actually, am just gonna go down to this corner. No. Hold on. I'm gonna go down to this corner so you can at least see the video. I know you can't read. Reading what they say is less important. Bears, one, zero. Four range three thousand one hundred. I need to go. You guys need to be even. We didn't. I forgot to hit apply. Hundred yards. Or did I? Okay. <clears throat> anyway, we turn in one oh four. New course one zero. So this four, is the target course, bearing up one, here. Zero, this is the four, true zero. north. Is this? Contact We're facing this table. way. Now bears one zero seven 
range 2,600 yards. So we're gaining on him. Let's go full. All engines ahead full. All engines ahead full. Aye, we're, go sir. we're going like 27 knots right now. Um, I don't remember how to do anything else though. This is the only part that I actually do remember. So we don't need sonar. Combat Contact wise. Able now bears one, one, zero. Range 2,000 yards. So which one's the newest one? This is us. Contact Abel now bears one, one, six. This is when Range they get close. This is our contact. Yards. And this is uh, everybody in the convoy. Mounty reporting. Mounty, this is Bloodhound. Engage contact. Abel. Roger. Mounty, Mounty contact. Abel. He's going to abandon the convoy. Chad, is he not like right next to us, bro? Stand by to fire. Lost contact. Able. Last bearing. One, two, three. Last range. One thousand yards. One, two, three. Bridge. Starboard lookout. Object one half to the right. I feel like this thing turns really one, fast. Four, two. Appears to be periscope feather. Surface radar has a new contact. Bearing zero one four. Range four thousand seven hundred yards. Bridge combat. New Surface contacts. Contact. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember Bearing how to do zero, the things that I need to do. Range, oh, this is cool. Yards. I designate contact Baker. Time seven eleven. And then those ships back there are there are uh, the ships we're escorting. So they're on lookout right now. There's our stern, starboard, port. Okay. I don't care if we get blown up. This is this is the figure out what all the buttons do portion of our campaign, you know? Uh, we need to probably go to sonar. And do... Sonar. This is the captain. Perform active search. Zero, one, two... Two, one, zero, two. Investigating arc three, two, seven through. So one, this is just true four, east, seven, north, south, five, east. Okay, so if we're facing, zero, 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 through this is not one, relative eight, to us. Zero. Combat sonar. Investigating arc zero, zero, zero through one. I think eight, you can also have your your on. escorts look and ping different areas too, right? But yeah, as far as like our contacts, we barely. We lost contact with one that was like right on top of us. Contact Baker now bears 355, five, range 3,600 yards. New course. Three, five, five, like, I feel like we've already let one slip through and it's going to start blowing up convoys. Um, because it was what, like a thousand yards away or something? Contact Extremely close. This is we're just going to randomly four, explode. Niner, <laughs> we're just going to like, there's going to be like a random boom. <laughs> 3,300 yards. I am a fan of the push Blood all out. buttons technique. But yeah, I would have had to look at this and I could see their route was like this, 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 Contact this. Baker now bears three, four, okay. five, range 3,000 yards. He's getting, that guy's getting real close. New course, three, four, three. Course, three, four, three. Aye, sir. All engines ahead full. All engines ahead full. Aye, sir. Okay, here's my question though, right? What Contact happened to Baker now bears three, four, zero. Range 2,800 yards. Mounty is still Point supposed out. to be this pinging is Mounty. sonar. This regained contact. Able bearing two, zero. Oh, we seven. regained Range contact. 1,800 yards from Bloodhound. Uh, able bearing two, zero, seven. Bloodhound. This is Mounty. 
Bounty lost contact. Able. Last known at bearing two zero four range. So there's a dude right there. From and we're like Surface in between both contacts. contacts. Able. Bearing two zero. I wish you could go into slow mo in this game, dude. Contact Baker now bears three three four range two thousand four hundred yards. Stand by to fire. Yeah, th there's just a lot going on. It's very overwhelming because you can't like in uh in U boat you can go into slow mo, so you can have everything go at like partial speed so that you can govern all the different aspects of the ship while things are still happening and still live. This one is just like, there's people, sir. There's people everywhere. Ah, uh, there's. Uh, I've lost contact. I've regained contact. It's like playing comms with your with your friends in like your milsim, and your milsim guys are just like chattering away. Like, okay, um, we got contact northwest. Uh, well, I've lost contact, lost visual, regained visual. I see him poking around a tree. He's now firmly behind the tree. I'm taking shots. I'm taking shots. Uh, shots whizzing by my head right now. Arma comms vibes. <laughs> it's like, what do I pay you guys for? Do something about it. Okay? The reason why slow-mo in games like this is good is because you are one person doing the job of many people. The captain is not in charge of sonar and... Six. Gun, like you, you tell them when to yards. fire, but you're not the one getting the firing solution. You're the dude, you're managing people, you're delegating as the captain, right? But in the game, you are all those things. And especially if you're having to do them manually. So I'm not going to be able to hit anything right now because I don't even understand who I should be going for Contact. first. I'd rather just like reset, to be honest. And then just scale this down. And then just skip the intro cutscene. There we go. Okay. And then we just like kinda start start from scratch here. <clears throat> Here's us. Bloodhound, this is Mounty. Mounty holds sonar contact. Able. Bearing two seven three. Range 3,200 yards from Bloodhound. Evaluated as definite sub. Bridge combat. New contact for sonar. Bearing 273. Range 3,200 yards. I designate contact able. Time 12 8. Birds. All engines ahead. Bloodhound. This is <laughs> and they're all now talking over each other, contact. too. <laughs> Bearing 27. Okay, they're 3,300 yards away. Yards Bearing 275. We are currently in the process of turning right now. This is us turning to try to face our, I think our contact Abel's up here on A. Bloodhound, this is Mounty. Mounty now has sonar contact. Abel, bearing two, seven, nine. And range, the game said sometimes you should from be using multiple people to attack and sometimes you shouldn't be. In this case, Mounty is. Mounty, this is Bloodhound. Proceed to engage contact. Abel. Roger. Mounty engaging contact. Bloodhound. This I'm gonna laugh if we Mounty have a collision. Now has sonar contact. Abel. Bearing two eight three. Range three thousand one hundred yards from Bloodhound. Was that a question, sir? Okay. Bearing uh two eight three from us. Bloodhound. We have air support? Bloodhound, this is Mounty. Mounty now has sonar contact. Able. Bearing 284. Range 2,800 yards from Bloodhound. All right, Mounty, I don't. This is Bloodhound. Maneuver to new station. Roger. Mounty maneuvering. I'm going to have station. Black Cat. Mounty, this is Bloodhound. Proceed to engage contact. Able. Roger. I gave him two different Mounty orders on contact. accident. Able. Black Cat reporting. Black Cat. Bloodhound, this is Mounty. <laughs> Mounty now has sonar contact. Able. <sighs> the people to uh, excuse me black cat ah this is mounty again i just want to let you know that i'm still tracking our target i don't care if you're trying to get air support right now or not way too dank way too dank
Like, why is... This is Mounty. Mounty now has sonar contact. Why don't we have sonar contact? Because my sonar is not pointing in the right direction, probably. from Bloodhound. Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. We're, we're going to... Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. Periscope, feather, sight, southwest, ten mile. Black Cat is contacting Abel. Easy! <laughs> Don't even need to do anything. We got a crit from our air support. <laughs> I don't even need to play. Why am I here? Just have the boats go and crit the subs. Okay, all right. Let's slow down. All engines ahead standard. All engines ahead standard. Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. Drop death charges on sub. Direct hit, sub sinking. Sub sinking? The sub is sinking. I didn't have to play, dude. All I had to do was left click the air support to go kill those dudes. All engines ahead, one third. All engines ahead, one third. Okay, here's what we're gonna do though. I'm gonna increase. Arc. One, zero, two, three, all right, all right, one, all right, all right, nine, chat. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Zero, Let's look at tactical. Five, seven, okay. Through, no black cat. You three, don't no seven, don't go over there. I, sir. Roger, whatever. Do whatever you want. Uh, Mounty, you search this way. I sunk a U-boat and got a Chivo. And I'm going to search south. Okay? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do searching here. Start over here. Seven, zero. Surface radar has a new contact. We got surface Bearing radar. Zero, seven, three. Range, eight thousand one hundred yards. Okay, three. zero, seven, three. Contact from radar. Bearing, zero, seven, three. Range, eight thousand one hundred yards. All right, I designate contact. Take me Baker. to. Time. Twelve, twelve. Bridge, starboard lookout. Oil radar. All right, we got a problem, Chad. It's on the other side of our convoys. Mounty, this is Bloodhound. Maneuver to new station. Roger. Mounty, maneuvering to new station. Mounty, this is Bloodhound. Maneuver to assigned station. Roger. Mounty, maneuvering to assigned station. Okay, we got we got a ping on radar. Here's what I need to do. I need to go like, um, southeast one five zero at speed. New course one four nine. Course one four nine. Aye, sir. All engines ahead, standard. All okay, let's take a look. Aye, sir. I gotta go around my convoys. Because if I try to go through... There's our air support right there, too. That looks cool. He's he's just Newman overhead. They're looking for him. But yeah, I don't want to go through my convoys. Gotta play an air support game next, where I'm the dude in the in the sky. But yeah, I guess I'm. Am I gonna go around this way? We gotta go faster. All engines ahead, full. All engines ahead, full. More like Aye, 130. Sir. Wait. New course. One three zero. Course one three zero. Aye, sir. Dude, we're Tokyo drifting right now. <laughs> Maybe you're not supposed to turn while going full speed. This seems too fast. We gotta make some time. Her contact is on the wrong side. Okay, I mean, I've got Mounty moving to position. Black Cat reporting. Roger. Black Cat on the way to patrol area southeast. Alright, we're gonna start patrolling Roger. over here. Black Cat. We can actually probably take more of like stop. I I keep left clicking to move the map. I'm just giving Black Cat five different. Oh my god! I'm sorry, chat. I had to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can take more of a direct route, like one o five, one ten. Course one one one. Course one one one. I sir. Yeah, see, we want to go around the white dots. This is us. This is for close range. 
is our radar contact. Those are the ships that we're escorting right here. We're chugging along. I still don't know how to actually be the one. I know how to move uh, air support over there, but I don't know how to sink them myself. We don't, when was the last time we had contact? 12, 12, 16? So that's like right now. Roger. Mounty maneuvering to station bearing one zero. Because it is 12, 16, 53 right now. So that's like real time. Okay. There's, there's the side, or the, is that the front of our convoy? Is that the wake? And they're kind of traveling that direction? So yeah, we're going to... Drift around them right here. Hopefully. Let's go, uh... Let's go 90. New course. Zero. Nine. Zero. Course. Zero. Nine. Zero. I, sir. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Zero. Six. Three. Range. Zero. Six. Four three. Four hundred yards. Yeah, he's pretty far away from me. Okay, I think we're ready to um contact turn Baker. again. Now bears zero six one range three thousand eight hundred yards. Bridge, starboard lookout, merchant ship, CBDR, bearing three, two, seven, <laughs> Bridge, three, starboard, two, merchant ship. I say again, CBDR. They're like, we're gonna get rammed, sir. <laughs> You guys are fine, dude. Just keep going. I am the captain. Contact I've planned this Baker. out. Now bears zero, six, zero. Range 3,100 yards. You're good, bro. I'm going to cross your paths. You won't even know. Look out panicking over a merchant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, we need to go... Uh... Contact Baker... Now bears zero five niner range two thousand five hundred yards course zero six zero course zero six zero. I All right, we got plenty of clearance here, and we're we're at like thirty two knots right now, full speed ahead, man. Chat, what is flank? Is that even faster? What is the? They didn't even explain what flank Contact was. Baker now bears zero six zero range one thousand eight hundred yards. Oh, it's like right here, dude. All engines ahead. Two thirds. Chat, it's like right here. I don't know what to do now. Hi, sir. We're we're moving straight ahead, dude. Contact Baker now bears zero six three range one thousand two hundred yards. Sonar. This is the captain. Investigate arc zero one five two one zero five. Uh, gun director. I don't know what to do, chat. It's un it's underwater, is it not? We had radar contact, and now we have lost. We've lost. Is it not right there? I see something right there, dude. I don't know what I don't know what I just shot at. There's something. How do you zoom? Lookout. Object one half to the horizon. Bearing zero six nine. Fire. What are you aiming? How do you aim? How do you make it? How do you make the? Bearing zero seven zero. Appears to be periscope feather. Fire. 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 Okay, hold on. That was a turtle. Nice aim. Rudder five degrees left. Okay, here's midships. Aye, sir. Combat. Uh, sonar. How do you? What what direction are we facing right now? We're facing like east. Sonar combat. Investigate arc zero zero six through 
Zero, nine, six. Active search. Three, two, one. Through, one, four, one. Aye, sir. Sonar, this is the captain. Investigate arc. Zero, one, five, two, one, zero, five. Investigating arc. Zero, okay, that's why one, true versus relative. Five, through, one, zero, um, five, yeah, they were like right in front of us. This is the gifts up south. Trial. Oh, don't draw that. It was like right there. Okay, I forgot what this line is. Rudder, five degrees right. Aye. Gifts up sound zero, fits in perfectly six, with nine. the radio voices. The line is your sonar direction. Okay, hang on. I know what to do. We need to get um our friends. Mounty reporting. Is Mounty gonna ram us? That'd be pretty funny. Mounty's right there. Stand by to fire. I, I I need to go back and do the gun. Oh, there's radar aiming. That's what I was supposed to do. There's no reason to ready the depth charges, I don't think, if I don't even know. We don't even have a contact right now, so I gotta find them again on sonar, right? Sonar, this is the captain. Perform active search. Zero, three, nine. One, two, nine. Relative. Active search. Zero, three, nine, through. One, two, nine. Relative. So the only thing that we know for sure is that they were taking this course. Mounty, you better not hit me, bro. You're my escort. I'm the one. You got to follow my lead, bro. Sub expired? We're about to make some submarines expire. Okay, do you think it already went past us? Toward the, uh... What if we have Mounty look this way? And then... Our sonar... Sonar. This is the captain. Ping's behind Form us. Active search. One, two, nine. Two, two, one, nine. Relative. Active search. One. Three, two, through, two, 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 relative. Two, two, Aye, two. It's all fun and games until a submarine disappears right underneath you, huh? We are probably getting, like, too far away from our boats, are we not? Flush them out, Skipper. I think I'm gonna, like, turn around, maybe. Because this course is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna, like... Surface radar has regained contact. Seriously? Baker, bearing two, five, it's right on top of the convoys! Alright, 260. Black Cat. Black Cat reporting. Black Cat, this is Bloodhound. Attack contact, Baker. Roger. Black Cat, attack contact, Baker. Well, chat, uh, we gotta make a turn. Baker now bears two, five, six. Range it snuck right under us. Yards. Looks like you drove right over them and didn't drop your depth charges. Yeah, because we didn't have a firing solution. I don't remember how your little squiggle lines are supposed to start forming, okay? I had to learn 16 different sailor stations in one uh, crash Contact course. Baker now bears two, five, six. Range, 2, you don't get a firing yards. solution with depth charges, bro. 
you, there's a whole system, dog. Okay, you have to use the um, whatever the hell. Stand by to fire. The little squiggle lines, man. I don't even remember what page it's on. All right, it's on page Contact 250 Baker, of your manual. Bears, two, five, it's not the DRT, range, it's not the disc projector, it's yards. not tactical, it's not radar, even though that's all in combat. Stand by to fire. It's not on gun director. It's TRR on sonar. We gotta have like, this tells you when to shoot. And we, I gotta be able to track Contact them via sonar Baker, first. Now bears two, five, Eight. All right, Rain. anyway, shut up. I'm trying to catch up. Yards. Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. Subsite, northeast, two mile from convoy. All engines ahead, full. All engines Chappy, ahead. like, you just started playing this game one hour ago? Why haven't you figured out how to be a god gamer and kill the subs? <laughs> Contact. <sighs> you 11 message Andy? Okay, I had to see who you Baker, were. Now bears two, five, niner, range 2,800 yards. Two, Bloodhound, this is Blackhead, engaging sub. They're using machine guns to engage the sub. Lost contact, Baker, last bearing, two, five, niner, last okay. range, 2,000. We're gonna go stand. Yards. All right, this is a uh, relative bearing. Sonar, this is the captain. Perform active search. Three, one, seven, two, zero, four, seven. Relative. Active search. Three, one, seven, through, zero, four, seven. Relative. Aye, sir. Bloodhound, this is Black Cat. Periscope feather sighted north, two mile. Uh, periscope feather sighted north. Proceed to engage. Roger. Two Roger. miles from convoy. Okay. I told Mountie to engage as well. And I've Black got... Down. This is Black Cat. Periscope feather sighted north. Two miles from convoy. Combat sonar. Regained contact. Baker. We got sonar. Three, five, three, five seven. seven. Relative. Range. One Wait, thousand, three, five, seven. Relative? Yards. What? Bearing... Hang on. What? That's Mounty, right? Combat sonar. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Three. Five. Five. Relative. Range. One thousand. Three. Five. Five. Relative. Don't tell... Look, I want to look at this on relative, but I want the true bearing. Basically, we're heading straight towards it. 1,500 yards. Okay, see, we're starting to get some, uh... Contact sonar. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Two. All right. Five. Three. Range. One Two, five, three. I wish I could look at it relative, but get information, uh, true. Two. Five. Two. Range. One thousand. One hundred yards. Combat sonar. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Two. Five, All right, one, Chad, we're gaining three, on it. 1,100 yards. 100 yards. Bearing steady. New course. Two, five, one. It's right there. Two, five, one. Aye, sir. Right there. I see Combat it. Sonar. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Two, four, six. Range. 700 yards. Combat sonar. Contact. Baker. Now bears. Okay, I don't. Two, four, five. Range. Two, four, five. He's turning. Yards. Bearing steady. Bridge, port lookout, object one half to the horizon, bearing two, four, four, appears to be periscope feather. Bloodhound. Can we get some guns on this thing? No longer available. In combat sonar, contact Baker, now bears two, three, seven, dove. range, 400 yards, estimated depth, shallow. Stand by to fire, start tracking contact, target acquired. Two, Ready depth three, charges, five, shallow, Ready destructive. Charges, shallow <laughs> There's too much going on, chat. Uh, I don't remember when you're allowed to fire. Combat because you're, okay, I, I can't pause. I can pause for a second. 
you're supposed to wait until these lines hit the little dotted line or something, right? But they didn't really explain that well because it literally was just like, hey, do this, and then we'll give you a countdown. Three, two, one, go. And this is when you're supposed to push it, so you didn't even learn anything. I can also save the battle here. I think this is a good test. That way I can, I can, um... Baker now bears two, two, zero. Rain. It's when it leans far enough to the left that it touches... We're 200 yards away, two, two, zero. New course, two, two, zero. Course, two, two, zero. Aye, sir. Bat sonar contact Baker now bears one five two range one hundred yards contact one five two a hundred yards what new course one five one course one five four I sir combat sonar contact Baker now bears what zero seven Nine, range 200 what Wake on right these are completely different directions dude zero seven nine two hundred yards new course zero seven nine <laughs> I don't know what's going on dude why is there a cutscene what What the hell happened? I didn't even press the shoot button. I didn't even fire the depth charges unless they fired them automatically for me. One U-boat sunk? Was there a time limit on this? The other boat got them. No, they didn't. One U-boat sunk. There were two U-boats in this mission. There were two U-boats. One of them was sunk with a plane, and the other one was the one that I was chasing until the direction started changing wildly. <sighs> one is all we need, true gamer. You got an A for effort. Dude, I don't know what's going on, man. <sighs> Let's go back to the test save and see. I mean... See what? Combat sonar. Contact Baker. Now bears two, one, three. Range two hundred yards. Combat sonar. Contact Baker. Now bears two, zero, four. Range. Okay, black cat's up here. Contact Mounties here. Depth. I'm here. Contact is like here. Contact decreasing depth. Does that mean shallower? It's on the Zero, other side of us. Range, yards. Estimated depth but shallow. it keeps telling me the range is a hundred yards, dude. It just passed by us. New course, toward zone, Mountie. Contact, so I was supposed to drop, Zero, but six, the uh, range, TRR never hit the other line. Depth. I don't move this. It's on automatic. This is on automatic. So it's supposed to do it itself. And then this happens. 
I don't know, dude. I'm not sure. The do 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 do. People clap. The plexiglass is automatic. We did the whole ass tutorial, bro, while you were not here. Apparently. Azure Dragon, thank you for the six months of sub. I appreciate the half a year. Welcome back for one more. Flapjack also for three years. Uh, thank you for the three years of sub. Modified said no U-boat Etal cheese. Thanks for 62. What's up, Modified? Uh, New Fire M says please pet Midas for me. I will. Thank you for 28 months. Uncle Owen Rip says yay or something for three months. What up, Uncle Owen Rip? Thanks for subbing again. War of the Worlds gifted a sub to I'm Just Confuse, who's here for over two years. Uh, Narfwack also thanks for 52 months. What up, Narfwack? Raccoon, thank you for 21. Sorry I missed all you guys. What up, Raccoon? Vash Connor says, Captain, my captain. I'm, I did my best. Apparently we won. I don't know. Um, terminally chill, pumping it. For 15, high terminally chill. Feng Shui. Thank you for 32 to uh, 30 second gifted sub to Fronald. Whatever that you know what I mean. Fronald, welcome back. Um, and Anua Curry, good luck with the fish. I also saw Jamin Ben, Shaky D, Trev Dog Millionaire, and Karth Vader subscribing. Thanks to each one of you, chat. I'll be real with you. I'm I'm changing, we're doing something else. <laughs> I'll be I I can't. I can't. We're going to do something else. Um, like, I don't know, dude. Uh, there are so many, there's so many things from the, like, there's so many things that could be fixed with mild play testing. Mild play testing, including the tutorial, which was just, anxiety inducing from the amount of chatter on comms while you're trying to learn to the blocks of text that are thrown at you like a uh, board game rules list where your dm doesn't know how to present information and then and then to top it off it seems like the majority of the game is kind of just like pitched battles where you're guaranteed to fight a U-boat, which is sort of defeating the purpose of being a U-boat hunter, which is the unknown factor, which I think games like U-boat hit very well, where you're sort of on a longer career that is contiguous, and you don't know for certain whether you're going to encounter things or what you're going to encounter. So it's uh yeah. I mean, I I under I respect the ambition of trying to get all those systems, but you got to like if you're going to put them in the game, you got to explain them well. And then to top it all off, when I finally think I've discovered how to track down a U-boat, I'm not really sure why, but there's just a game over cinematic and apparently we won. I don't really I I have no context for how or why. Just adding a slowdown mechanic would do wonders too. Yeah. Yeah, it would. So I'm just I'm just overwhelmed, man. I tried. I gave it I gave it a really earnest attempt, but there's just too much. There's a I would describe it as a cacophony of lights and sounds. And it just gives me a headache. The cutscene was hilarious. Yeah, the cutscene was hilarious. I thought that I was getting a slight hang of it, um, at least the automatic portions. And then I think the most confusing aspect is that little like plexiglass. And then um, also, I had another thought, dude, but my brain is fried egg and I've only been streaming for two hours. Um, and also the fact that the distance is never less than 100 meters. You're supposed to have a dead zone underneath your ship. Which I do remember. You have a dead zone on sonar underneath your ship. But we never lost contact with it. It was always 100 meters away minimum. And then it changed directions. 
So I wasn't really sure what I was following or not. So here's what here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna transition into night mode here real quick. Stand by. We're gonna we're gonna get into night mode and I'm gonna figure something else out. Well, I was hoping for a single and I struck out once again instead. How many how many strike strikeouts? How many outs are we at now? <laughs> Got to play the field. Okay. There we go. There we go. Well, Chad, I got an idea. I feel like we need a pick me up. I feel like we need to lift our spirits. I feel like we need something that'll put a smile on all of our faces. Why don't we go ahead and make one of the AIs that I'm supposed to make um, from post subathon? O2. We're supposed to make a Randy Random and the Ethel Chad, I think. Was it Chad? I think we need a new friend, a new character. Let's change over to that. I'm also going to have to go into follower only mode because it's the we're we're back in just chatting. It's obviously Diablo 4 time. I don't know. I don't know if that's obvious. But yeah, that was uh that was kind of brutal. I got I got battered around real fast. I think that it's sort of, for me, highlights how, I don't know, I don't know that I would call it a, a like, must buy, but I think it highlights how robust of a game U-Boat is. Or at least it's more made for me. Like having like a contiguous campaign that you develop with like a crew in one boat over time is a very cool idea. Okay, so uh, let's not make Randy yet. Let's make let's let's figure out who Etal Chad is. I think that's the other AI we're supposed to make. Etal smile. Not we're not. We, I don't think we're supposed to make chat yet. I don't know that that was ever one. Uh, Etal Jeff was close to how you might sound. <laughs> That's basically chat. I am chatting. How did you know? All right, but let's turn the music up. All right. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I, w I was holding out hope for something a little, a little more like the, f I, I was hoping for more fun times like we had with U-Boat with Destroyer. Unfortunately, that was not what, what I got. So let's create some of our own fun. Like we've had so much practice doing during the subathon. We don't need video games to have fun. Not around here. So here's what I'm going to need you guys to do. Yeah, or car Carrier Command 2 was 
also sort of what I'm thinking of. He hates video games. It's just, it's just been rough lately, man. It has just been a bit rough lately. Here's what I need you to do, chat. Uh, I need you to start, don't paste them yet, but go ahead and find some copy pastas that you can uh, bring forth. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna record me reading those things and create a synthesized AI voice. So I'm gonna have to read copy pastas. It's basically like, you know in the movies where they're trying to Mission Impossible duplicate somebody's voice and they have them read a little card and that card has all the sounds on it that a human voice might make so that they can duplicate it. It's basically what I have to do. So I gotta, I gotta read, I'm, I read copy pastas because it just has a whole different bunch of words that will be able to be automatically synthesized into a new voice. Mission Impossible streamer. And then we're going to use that to, in tandem, with a personality that I will prescribe for our boy, uh, Etel Chad. We'll bring him out of the womb, birth him into the world. Uh, what's up, Demoli? Thank you for the four months. Azure Dragon as well. I saw you a minute ago, but thanks again. Hi, Demoli. Thanks for dropping your prime. I feel like um, the personality that I have in mind for Mr. Chad is one of not quite like a dance, alien dance kind of guy, but I feel like is Etel Chad more of like a like a like a like a like a nineties cool guy? Is he like a deep voice? Does he does he have like a super deep voice? You know, like Does he does he sound like this? Hold on. Hey everybody. It's me. E-Town Chad. And then you go like boom, boom, and you go, um, boom. Hey, everybody. It's me, E-Town Chad. Or is he more of like a... <laughs> is, that, is that too easy? Because we did do some weird ones that ended up seeming like... When we were making Etal Alien, chat was complaining a lot. And then, once it was done, people were a little bit more on board. Duke Nukem. Whoa, like... Is, is he... Is Etal Chad more of like a tubular guy? You know? Like, is, is he more of a... Guy who thinks he's a Chad, but actually isn't. Ninja Turtles. Bro, give me some pizza right now. I would I would smash some cheese pizza. He thinks he's a Chad, but he's a rat. I mean, I could always just do two, and we could see which one we like better. I'm here to make AI and sink U-boats, and I am all out of U-boats. Bro, I am all out of U-boats. We haven't really done one where I've had to... So, okay, let me put it like this. Sometimes when you deepen the voice artificially and then throw it into the vocal synthesizer, weird things can happen. Where it comes out much different than you expect. <clears throat> But what if, what if he was like, uh, like a little bit more down here, and then had a little bit more, uh... I feel like I'm, my, I'm gonna kill my voice by doing that by the end. Hi, chat. What's up, DoorCube? Alright, let me just, let me just do some voices and see if anything sticks. Chad, give me, give me one pasta. Give me one pasta.
I said one. That's more than one. <laughs> Some of you guys need to freshen up your pasta collection as well. <sighs> the pastas are going wild. We're losing them. Do, we'll do a, a classic. <clears throat> the game's title, Remothered, is a deliberate puzzle. I feel like I'm accidentally going to do country accents. Does he tell Chad, like, does he have a country accent? It could mean something like, mothered again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know how the AI would do a country accent anyways. <laughs> I feel like that's where it goes. Why not? Why shouldn't he? Because I would do that, and then the AI would remove it, basically. That drifted into cool cowboy voice. The game's title, Remothered, is a deliberate puzzle. It could mean something like mothered again, or born again. But it is instead a combination of the words R-E-M. Rapid eye movement, moth, mother, other, and red. All of which refer to the game's story and symbolism. Those are all true statements. In a world... Yeah, I think he's just kind of like I'm. I'm gonna artificially deepen his voice too. So you'll hear my voice and then my voice with some deeper DB for the final version. Okay. All right, chat. Hit me with a few um, recording voice to synthesize AI voice. That way people who come in understand what I'm doing. Chat, also your pastas have to have words that are hopefully not made up words. Because the whole point of this isn't just to read funny pastas, it's to read words that the AI will be able to take what I say and assign it to what it knows it is. Because it knows where it is and it knows where it isn't. You know what I mean? All right, let's uh, let's try a few. So I'm gonna skip ones. Only real words like remothered. I didn't record that one. I was just speaking. <clears throat> I'm not sure that I like the voice yet. I'm 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 fifty fifty on it right now. Because, well, I think sometimes may I I feel like Etal Chad speaks slowly. I'm gonna be speaking slowly. And I think that the AI synthesized voice isn't capable of mimicking my speed. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna go. But I'm gonna, I think like talking slowly is. Can you add, I don't think I can do a surfer bro accent. I would have to listen. Whoa, like something like this? Like, listen bro, I don't really know who you think you are, man. Like, dude. <laughs> Hold up, man. Yo, that is far out. Okay, like, you just have to... Add, it's not... You can make it a little bit deeper later, but he, he kind of... Like, has that, like, U-shaped voice? It's a U-shaped voice. It starts out deep, and then it, well, you know, it kind of, like, dives and then rises back up. Whoa! <laughs> Hold on here, man. I feel like that could be, that could work as well. Dude, yeah, like tubular. 
Okay, I, I like that, actually. Let's try that. It's hard to do full sentences like that, though. Let's see what we can do. See, like these these are made up i'm not gonna i can't read these because they're just a bunch of names the ai is not gonna know what nostromo is and like huge numbers <laughs> okay this <laughs> I, I do recognize this I, <laughs> I know someone who wrote this. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to your flesh as though it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass you call the temple will wither and you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved, for the machine is immortal. When I see an ant, it is like seeing a declaration of war. I weigh the ratio of their head thorax and abdomen and immediately calculate their odds of success against my small arsenal of home alone style ant traps man ants always get to pick the battlefield are they in the cupboard oh they got in the cereal again are they making little lines on the hardwood around a long forgotten crumb of donut hauling it off like some great trophy i need to vacuum are they on god forbid the carpet oh my god This voice has gone some places. Yeah, it's going places. It's going places. It's also going to uh, come out like lower. Okay, so you have to ignore my pitch and you'll you'll actually hear like this pitch. I need to back. It's gonna come out like, like here. Are they on, God forbid, the carpet? Oh my God. <laughs> thorax and abdomen and immediately calculate their odds of success against my small arsenal of home alone style ant traps man <laughs> Are they ma it's real okay it, it's let's look it like this many accents come with words that get added to them that enhance the accent right so like when you're reading something the actual text will dictate what accent you're using so yeah like dude like if if you have a country accent you'll have y'all with it so it's tough to maintain accents while reading other paragraphs actually but to be fair the ai is going to erase those accents anyways it's going to mostly just take the voice we need chad copy pastas he would eat out pump it at the end of his sentence for sure Bruh, <laughs> dude, listen, dude. Okay, let's just let's just start over. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try uh, deeper again. I think the music is also distracting. Boop. Okay. Chat. Dude, bro, copy, pastas. I'll find my own. Actually, there aren't any. Okay, let's let let let's give this a go.
starting here. At the same time, skateboarding itself was really expressing itself as a cultural phenomenon. The kids were putting out these legendary skating videos and stamping them with their own unique style. All these skaters had a different feel. This guy's heavy metal. This guy's hip-hop. So it was a super vibrant culture. We were just trying to make a video game that was true to that. First off, I put half and half in my eggs when I beat them. It is so better than milk. I also use a butter called Irish Butter from Kerry Gold. The good shit. When you have heated on medium heat, uh, the pan. Put the butter in there, get it all over the pan. Then pour the eggs in the center so you don't get it to the edges of the pan and it burns. Let it do its thing. You know, cooking. Then take a fork and move the cook parts and flip them. Pumping the chat to make it harder to read. That computer reminds me of a gruff Federation CO I served under named Adam Malkovich. He called me Lady on Missions. From anyone else, it would have sounded sarcastic, but Adam made it sound dignified. Out of respect and with some irony, I named the computer after him. Back when Army of Two first came out, me and my college roommates, sweet mates, were all way too into Halo 3 to really care. I didn't even think Army of Two was on my radar in 2008. My college sweet mates would sneak into my room while I wasn't there and play Halo 3 without my permission on my Xbox. But more importantly, they would look at my DVD collection. I had like 215 DVDs in alphabetical order, and they would play a cruel joke. Here's the thing. You said a jackdaw is a crow. Is it the same family? Yes. No one's arguing that. As someone who is a scientist who studies crows, I am telling you specifically in science, no one calls jackdaws crows. If you want to be specific, like you said, then you shouldn't either. They're not the same thing. We haven't had visitors since the great disaster, an event so gnarly I couldn't return home. So I became the number one beach bum, tour guide, and local legend here. The name's Jerry. Come along with me and I'll give you the island tour. Help me out. I know you're a Pop-Tart man. I just went to my local Kroger equivalent and they had Pop-Tarts at $3.27 for a box of eight. Am I wrong remembering that these boxes were like $1.99 just a couple years ago? Is this the first time I've noticed the effect of inflation? Own a musket for home defense, since that's what the founding fathers intended. Four ruffians break into my house, what the devil? As I grab my powdered wig and Kentucky rifle. Blow a golf ball-sized hole through the first man. He's dead on the spot. Get it right. Lego Island is a Lego-themed open-world action-adventure game developed and published by Mindscape. It was released for Windows on September 26, 1997 as the second Lego video game overall and the first one outside of Japan. This is an interesting time. Oops. Oh, oh wrong button. Wrong button. What up, Raiders? Interesting raid time. <laughs> what, what's up, Splat? You guys are unlocked. You're free to raid. Uh, I'm in the just... <laughs> I'm in the just chatting category, so I had follower-only mode turned on for a second. I've disabled it. There are some weird people in this category, myself included right now. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. What's up, Raiders? Raiders caught us being extra weird today. Yeah. Caught me being extra weird. Uh, Splat has been possibly addicted to Enshrouded, which we got to play yesterday a little bit. Let's get some music on now. There we go. I hope Enshrouded has been treating you well. Welcome back. You got a Kiwi, Kavoth, Gagaxian Prime, Brian Whitaker. I can also scroll down so we can... You can see yourself. I was scrolled up reading some copy pastas on the chat. Um, I'll give you a demo of what we're doing before I uh, subject you to it. 
BK Khan, what up? Meow or Moo? Fox Dot, yeah, just another day for us. Splatter Raid, hi, how are you? Hello, Dragon Blood. We're, we're doing good. I tried a, a new, well, it was new to me, um, U Boat Hunter. Uh, it's called Destroyer U Boat Hunter. And I, I could only make it like an hour and a half, and I, I gave up. I've played a lot of U Boat and enjoyed that a lot, but this was kind of like that, but from the boat side and like the above water boat instead of below water boat. And the tutorial was incredibly overwhelming. And I just as I thought I was getting a handle on the controls, the game that I was in ended with a strange cutscene before I could actually sink the U-boat. And that's what kind of pushed me over the edge there. <laughs> so I, I've switched gears. And I am just being a weird guy who's recording his voice, reading apparently copy pastas in order to synthesize my own voice. I'll give you guys a, a little taste of that. It'll, it'll turn out to be something like this. Hey, uh... Evil Etal, say hi to the Raiders from Splattercat. Oh, Splattercat Raiders, welcome to the stream where I magically transform into an evil version of Etal. Prepare yourselves for sarcastic comments and biting humor. Mwah ha ha! Okay, uh, so we're we're making that guy. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. We're making the Chad AI right now, but this is Evil Etal, a different one that we've made. This is my voice layered over Chad GPT responses. Uh, shout out Splattercat for hey, being a- Hey, Splattercat! <laughs> Apparently, you're a great content creator. Kudos to you, I guess. Just remember, you can never be as evil and entertaining as me. Mwahaha! Perfect mwahaha, apparently. Ah, <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're making a new character. Mwahaha. However, Definitely want to shout out our good friend, Splat. Your boy is back. Thanks so much for raiding, and hello, raiders. There he is. If you're in my chat and you're hanging out, please give Splat a follow by clicking the heart at the top of your screen, unless you've already clicked it, in which case, do not kick, click it again. Do not. But I hope Enshrouded has been treating you guys well. Welcome aboard. We are going to be playing something else tonight. We're probably going to be playing some... I don't I don't know exactly what, uh, but we're going to be doing this for a little while, and then maybe we'll hop into, like, a little bit of Battle Brothers or something once we finish designing this guy. Something like that. Just continue our campaign for a couple hours. I don't like playing Battle Brothers for like nine hours at a time, but I do enjoy playing it for a few hours at a time. It, get, it gets a little too intense after a full day. He had pretty much the same opinion as you and Avic, Did he? But yeah, let's do another shout out. Don't miss him, chat. Dude is still cranking out YouTube videos. Took a break from streaming recently. He's back. Give him a follow, check him out for his next stream. He'll probably be live, I would assume, again soon. If he's got something he wants to play. Yeah, what was the what was the final consensus on Enshrouded from Splat? But if you got somewhere to be, dude, go get some food. Kick back, relax. Thanks for sending your raiders over. How does that flip fan in the background work? Um well the reason I got it is because it has a HEPA air filter at the bottom. Uh, I've got really bad allergies, so it has a little bit of air purification going on right there. 
and then I assume it just like has a turbine that spins and then pushes air through little vents that go around the side and it sort of just like forces the air out. How often do you have to replace the filter? Um, it has a little light that appears, but that's where they get you, right? Because it's like not free for the filter. Um, I've only replaced it once since I've had it. It's after a certain number of hours being on. I, I don't remember how many hours. But yeah, a traditional bladed fan is going to get you a lot more airflow. This fan has lower airflow but it's only pushing filtered air. So I prefer it for that. It's also a bit quieter. Does it make, feel, does it feel like it's made the air nicer? I mean, I don't know. Some of it's mental, I'm sure. I haven't like tested it with a meter or something. It, it, I think it feels good. I still have to vacuum and stuff in here, you know, cause I got a pooch, I got a doggo and he sheds. So I still have to, That that's what kills me. Every time I have to vacuum. Chat, why does it appear like this? Oh, it just cuts off the gaming and it looks like an R. Spider cat Gamir. How often do you change the filter on it? Chat just asked me that. When the when the light lights up, it's every so many hundred hours. Gotta bust out the N95 when vacuuming. Unfortunately, uh, dust can still get in through your eyeballs. <laughs> I need like a full face mask. Uh, just cover up. Okay. So... We're making a new Etau Chad AI. Do give us some tips to make him a proper Chad. Let's let's see what uh, Evil Etau th thinks makes the best Etau Chad. What's up? Hello, Mexa Dancer. How you doing? Ah, creating an Edel Chad AI, huh? Well, to make him a proper Chad. Make sure he flexes his virtual muscles, brags nonstop, and has an endless supply of protein shakes. Because nothing says Chad like being obnoxiously swole. <laughs> Mwahaha. Obnoxiously swole. <sighs> he has a point. I think he's got some good tips, actually. Okay, I've recorded almost five minutes. I just need, like, another five minutes. And then we'll have a little vocal editing to do, and then synthesize it, and then try and, try and perfect it in the character. So... I'm going to need uh, some different pastas in chat. I feel like I haven't heard the word swole in years. Well, people used to say it unironically. Then they said it ironically. And then they just stopped saying it, I guess. It's scary accurate. Kavothan knows what's up. They know what's up for sure. All right, let me put this back on. Pew. Recording voice to synthesize an AI voice. I'm recording my voice. What do we have so far? As the second Lego video game. All right, we're going to make it artificially deeper in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> So, 
Etel Chad is kind of somewhere down here. <coughs> Attention, all Fortnite gamers. John Wick is in great danger, and he needs your help to wipe out all the squads in the Tilted Towers. To do this, he needs a gold scar and a couple of chug jugs. To help him, all he needs is your credit card number and the three numbers on the back of the expiration month and date. But you gotta be quick so that John can secure the bag and achieve the epic victory royale. What's this you said to me, my good friend? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in conflict resolution, and I've been involved in numerous friendly discussions, and I have over 300 confirmed friends. I am trained in polite discussions, and I'm a top mediator in the entire neighborhood. You are worth more to me than just another target. I hope we will come to have a friendship never before seen on this earth. Do you know what happens if I suddenly decide to stop going into work? A business big enough it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up, gone. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his front door and gets shot. And you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. I feel like we have some overlap with Evil Etel here, maybe. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Eel ships on fire off the shoulder of the Sargasso. Muscle fibers glittering in the dark during World War III. All these eels lost in tide, like tears in the rain. Time to die. I know I said World War III instead of one, but it doesn't matter. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. That's all I'm going to do of that one. <laughs> I'm not. I ain't doing the whole thing. Chat, we need more pastas. We're almost done. I need, I need like two to three more minutes. I'm not reading that one. Alright, we're gonna find the good pastas. Okay. All right, let's do this. You can say that I was born to be a Twitch channel mod. I catch a glimpse of copy pasta. The adrenaline starts pumping. A whiff of drama. I snap into duty. My streamer calls for a chat ban. I erase that motherfucker from the history books of this channel. There is no command I won't code. No timeout I won't give. No Twitch laws I won't overlook. And no order I won't obey to make my streamer happy. And if you become his problem, I'm sorry to say, I'll become yours. I'm not doing Huey Lewis. I'm not, I don't know. It's not going to know what omnibiotics is. It has to know what the words are.
don't you think you might be hurting someone's feelings saying that over the internet? Think about it, my friend. As we speak, I am contacting my good friends across the USA, and your P.O. box is being traced right now, so you better prepare for the greeting cards, friend. The greeting cards that help you with your hate. You should look forward to it, friend. I can be anywhere, anytime for you, and I can calm you in over 700 ways, and that's just with my chest set. My homemade pasta recipe refers to the pasta maker attachment for the KitchenAid stand mixer, which is how we roll out our fresh pasta at home. If you don't have a KitchenAid, don't worry. You could also roll out this pasta dough according to the instructions on a regular pasta maker. However you make it, I hope you try this recipe. It's an easy, fun way to spend an hour in the kitchen with someone you love. And at the end, you get to eat a big plate of chewy noodles with a perfect al dente bite. All right, we need like one, one more. Anime is literally the best thing ever. All of you Americans who can't wrap your minds around it because you think your Hollywood films and TV shows, you're just stupid and wrong and need to stop speaking. Literally nobody likes your opinions except the other Americans that don't understand anime. And the fact that anime is truly a masterpiece of art, emotion, and plot development. The characters always develop so well and so does the plot, and it is just, like, really good. He didn't say Baka. Yeah, because the thing's not gonna know what Baka is, dude. I'm, I, like, the whole, the whole point of this isn't to read funny pastas, it's to read words that the AI is gonna know what that means. So I skip the words that it's not gonna know. Because of how it's pronounced. Like, if I said italics, it's gonna be like, what? We've been trying to reach you concerning your vehicle's extended warranty. You should have received a notice in the mail about your car's extended warranty eligibility. Since we've not gotten a response, we're giving you a final courtesy call before we close out your file. Press 2 to be removed and placed on our do not call list. To speak to someone about possibly extending or reinstating your vehicle's warranty, Press 1 to speak with a specialist. All right, good enough. That's enough. Now, the second part, which is easy. We go do some things, and I can show you these things. Over here. So this is all the recordings. So we have some some spikes like this. If any of those huge spikes need to be cut down. So we already figured out how to do that with was it the it was the limiter. And then that cuts down a lot of those peaks. At the same time, skateboarding itself. Okay, so we can do that, and then we hit. Um, Want to give us some bass? Like a lot of bass. Used to be kind of like Chad bass. Probably just like six dB bass, two dB de uh, treble. And then we got some more. Probably gonna do a limiter again. Okay, now we're just gonna change the pitch and find the right pitch for this. And then probably amplify it a bit. Adrenaline starts pumping. A whiff of drama, I snap into duty. My streamer calls for a chat ban. I erase that motherfucker from the history. <laughs> 
fight discussions, and I'm a top mediator in the entire neighborhood. I mean, that already sounds pretty good. I don't know that there's much else we need to do. Pretty much that easy. It's just my voice with some 9 dB deeper. With some bass. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, so now all I have to do is save some files. Oh, hold on. While we're here. There we go. I just need to save some audio files. Wait, I have like less... I only have nine minutes. I thought I had ten minutes. I have a little less audio than I thought I did. Alright, chat. I need like one more pasta. Yeah, Gibraltar, like, three of those words is going to have no idea what those are. <clears throat> I can just re-chat, actually. Oh, is the limiter the thing Annie was freaking out about being such a time saver? Robots have taken over Ital's stream and are making him read their demands. He keeps blinking SOS, but the AI is too powerful. Today, mankind is smeared across a region of the galaxy about 1,200 light years wide. Our best models indicate that there is a general trend toward greater population density toward the center of this region, where the stars were colonized earlier. At the edge of known space lie the rim worlds, drifting alone with few inhabited neighbors, mostly unvisited. All right, there you go. Now I should do the same thing to those that I just did to these. Bass. And treble. Limiter. Change pitch. Amplify. Okay, sick. Mankind is smeared and need to stop. Okay. Now I just gotta create some save files. I had a whole workflow for this. Hold on. Try that one more time. So I have to create like three files basically. Yeah, because they can't be over a certain megabyte. They have to be small. where I'm saving these. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Good, good, good. And then... Once we have all three of these... I take them over and upload them. Add a new voice. Which in this case is my voice, no me. Etal Chad. I have consent because it's me. All right, and now we get to mess with it until it does what we want it to do. 
Oh, chat, you've been frozen this whole time. Bro, you gotta say something. You guys are just happy staying frozen in time there. All right. <clears throat> so it's gonna start very weird and slowly get better. Here's our first test. This is gonna be our test sentence. So don't worry about what it says, just worry about how it sounds. This is the first default test sentence. Hey Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> okay, hold on. That's just the start. It's gonna get better here. So we're gonna give it some style. And it's gonna sound a little less robotic. I mean, I made that sentence. We're just gonna hear the same sentence a bunch of times. Hey Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> okay, it sounds a little better already. Let's do more style. Moving sl I'm moving sliders around to change the settings. This sucks, long. that's okay. Hey so Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. It is gonna be rad. Alright, let's push it up a little higher. This is where it's gonna start to get a little bit more unique sounding. Hey, Bruskies, what's happening? Dude. I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> A little bit more inflection. It's gonna be rad. Hey, Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. It is gonna be, it's gonna be hella rad, dude. Again. Hey, Broskies. What's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> Dude. Dude. So rad, man. Hey, Broskis, what's happening? Dude. I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> it's like he was thinking about every word that he was about to say before saying it. <laughs> like he wasn't sure where it was gonna go. Hey, 
Hey, broskies. What's happening? <laughs> Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's a dirt steeds. Uh, it's gonna be rad. Okay, so we've hit we've hit the instability. Uh, the, so the more I move the sliders, the less stable it becomes. And it's only gonna get more unstable from here. So bear bear with it as it gets a little bit more chaotic. We've hit we've figured out where the critical point is, yeah. Hey Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. It's gonna be rad, dude. You're so you're so cool. He is so cool. Who is this cool dude? Hey Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> More! Purposeful. He sounds excited at the end. It's gonna be, he's gonna say it differently every time. Hey, broskies, what's happening? Dude. I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. It is gonna be rad. All right, maximum instability just to see if it does anything weird. This is this is maximum sliders. AI italics. Hey Broskis, yeah. what's happening, dude? I'm thinking about <laughs> catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. Um, <laughs> oh, what's Okay, there was a little, there was a little bit at the end. There was a there's something something going on there. One more with the same settings, just to see how it hey, comes. Hey, Broskis, up. what's happening, dude? I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. <laughs> Okay, if we could keep that, it actually just sounds better at maximum instability. If we could just get rid of the instability parts. One more time, same settings, just to get a different, like, take. Hey, broskies. What's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. I mean, if he doesn't break out into Swedish then it's probably fine at really high instability. I might just give it like a little bit of stability, turn it down just a little bit to prevent the breaking into Swedish. Hey Broskis, what's happening? Dude, I'm thinking about catching some surf today with my board. It's gonna be rad. I wonder if we do like, dude, dude, it's going to be so rad. All right, last one, and then we'll try and... Hey, Broskis, what's happening? <laughs> dude, I'm thinking about catching <laughs> some surf today with my board. It's going to be rad. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. We're going to keep it there unless it goes wild. Unless it goes wild. And then I'll, I'll rein it in a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So now I have to give him a identity. I have to become a prompt engineer. Okay, um, I liked what, uh, Evil Ethal suggested earlier. Make sure he flexes his virtual muscles. You are Ethal Chad.
Dude, dude, Talix. Okay, I'm writing a prompt. <coughs> I'm allergic to writing prompts for my virtual AI characters. Hit me, hit me with some personality traits that you think make Etel Chad. We're gonna have to m mess with it a bit. Swole, confident. Emperor of Mankind, sure. Can he call people babe? <laughs> angry intense boisterous Okay, sorry, Chad, I'm typing. He's gotten every Paradox achievement.
Okay. <clears throat> I guess we're ready for version 1.0 testing. I guess we're in alpha. We're in beta testing now, I guess. Okay, um... Hi to the Twitch stream and introduce yourself. Let's see what he says. It'll always be alpha testing with Etel Chad. The Odyssey choose thoughts. For where sir or that see trick tree dog is zipper star or about a sheep you lead up at self in that sheep sips uh I did it you shot your squirt at the a us which about aged a spesta agar or sir show I okay so this is why we might need some more stability We might need some more stability. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Etal Chad? How you doing? Let's see what he says. I know he can do it. <laughs> Come on, bro. Yo, bro. I'm doing awesome. Just here hosting this sick live stream on Twitch. Pumping iron and having a blast. No way, I'm an AI. I'm the real deal. Pump it. Yeah. Ah. 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 Stop! Ours. Just stop. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. Uh. <laughs> it started out so good. It started out so good, man. And then you could have just simply stopped talking. Okay. <clears throat> Tell us about your daily routine. <laughs> He's thinking. It takes him a minute. He coming up with a dude. Oh. My daily routine is like a symphony of games, bro. I wake up, crush my workout, drink my protein shake, 
reflects in the mirror, and then it's all about spreading the swole vibes. Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> Based. Based. <laughs> He's perfect. Okay. <clears throat> um. What are you streaming on Twitch? Kind of like had to reset him for a second so he might forgot he forgot what he just said basically dude i'm streaming the ultimate bro workout session on twitch gonna pump some iron flex those muscles and show the world what it means to be swole get ready for a rad time bro pump it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Pump it, bro. I told him to pump it. Let's see what he says. Pump Dude, it. you know it. Oh. Pumping iron is the name of the game. Gonna lift heavy, get those gains, and show everyone what real muscles look like. Oh, gosh. Let's do this, Broski. Pump it. Yeah! <laughs> <Shut> up. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it sound? Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it begins. <laughs> oh my god. All right. I mean, he's definitely got a few things that need to be worked on. I, I heard him slip into a different language there for a second and then, and then bounce back out. All right, let's see what he says uh, in response to Splattercat's raid from earlier. Splattercat raided you with a party of 608. Whoa, bro. Splatter Cat Gaming, you bra, bringing in that massive raid party of six ho drop eight. Uh, that's gnarly, man. <laughs> Appreciate the support. Let's have a rad time together. Pump it. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> it's time for a BRB. 
to stretch and get something to drink. To stretch and pump it. No, the AIs can't talk to each other. Oh, uh, dude. Sush. Uh, don't worry, bro. Um, take your time. Stay hydrated. Stretch those muscles and come back. What did he say to her? So, first is the star set ahead. Out of stone or chill by chpo. Out there, wish to up. Sure, this. Um, Sure, shy. Stop. Just stop talking, dude. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to make him a little more stable. Make him a little bit more stable. Okay, so... He is connected to Twitch chat for some testing. So he's connected to subs, new subs, resubs, prime subs, and he'll occasionally say something to you. The chat, which he's doing now. He'll, he'll read you, see what you have to say. Yo, Brynjör Bjorn, my dude. A roar, uh, cooking noodles is chill. But I'm all about that gym life and pumping iron, bro. Get those gains and leave the cooking to the pros. Pump it. Oh, he, I sure, I he could see, say. A bird portal, uh, and, uh, oh, her, she, she. It just keeps going. So close. So true, bestie. <clears throat> Chat froze again. Beast. What's up, bros? We're live and kicking on this epic stream. Forget noodles. Let's talk about push-ups, protein shakes, and all things swole. Pump it, broskies. Yeah. <laughs> he said protein shakes. <laughs> Dude, I love protein. More noodles. He's talking to somebody. He's thinking. <laughs> Breezy meow. You got me with that Omega lol. But hey, don't forget to hit that follow button and join the Jack Squad. <laughs> We're all about the swole life here. Pump it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right, chat. I'm going to leave uh, Etel chat in your capable hands for a minute while I take the dog outside and go get a drink. So close. So close. <clears throat> um, people from the just chatting community, it's not that I hate you. But I gotta, I gotta have uh, bot protection on for a bit while I'm gone because the spam bots have been hitting the channel hard recently. So I gotta do follower only mode for a minute. I'll be back. I'll be RB.
in just a minute. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and I'll, I'll see you in a sec once I take the doggo outside. Grab a drink. Come back. This is the gift sub sub. Trial. This is the gift sub sub. Trial. Whoa, bro. Huge shout out to Mostly this Lost for gifting gift those sub. tier Trial. one subs. That's pure generosity right there, keeping the hype going. Let's keep the subscriptions pumping and the community strong. Pump it. Yeah! Whoa, Grulon coming in with even more gifting? That's absolutely rad, bro. The Edelix community is on fire. Let's keep those subs rolling in and show Grulon some serious love. Pump it, yeah! Hey, mostly lost. You know what happens if you sub. You unlock a whole new level of brotastic content, exclusive emotes, and my eternal gratitude, bro. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button. Pump it. Yeah. No worries, googly giants. Oh, uh, every single sub counts, bro. Your support is appreciated, and we're stoked to have you part of the Italix community. I uh, uh, keep spreading the love. Uh, pump it, ye. It push. Ish. Oh, oh, uh. Yo, Attack Frog, uh, 32 months of subbing? Uh, that's legendary, bro. 
appreciate the long-term support, and we're pumped to have you here with us. Let's keep crushing it together. Pump it! Yee hee yee! Eyes! Hey! Yo, my main is in the shop. 25 months of being a loyal sub. That's beyond rad, bro. Thanks for sticking around and being part of the hype. Let's keep dominating together. Pump it. Yeah! Yo, Ma Trappa, 18 months of subscribing. That's straight up awesome, bro. Thanks for the continued support and being an absolute legend. Let's keep rocking it together. Pump it. Yeah. Yee, yeah. Minotaur Monk, 31 months of subbing? Aura, that's insane, bro. Your dedication is unreal, and we're amped to have you here. Let's keep the hype train rolling. Pump it. Yee, aha. Well, co wap quo calendrial tours. Uh, webfteen seventy to the B on CC ma oxtash. As I am watched the scrolls souls are with stub had zirping. You're an absolute legend, bro. Thanks for the incredible support and being part of this epic journey. Keep rocking with us. Pump it. Yee she ah. What's going on? What's happening here? <sighs> He's doing his best. All right. Huge shout out to Metallus 69. A wee sister sister for the generous gifting. You're spreading the love and building an even stronger community, bro. Let's keep the subs coming and the hype train rolling. Pump it. Yeah. I don't know where he goes for a moment each time. <clears throat> By the way... Um, I think it's still dodging specific gift subs, as Nasukin found out the hard way. When I skip part, half waiting, see, Mama Monsistance, 
Er du rapper nok? Er du en bachelor prop? Min ord er til sit chest. Det er det sagt, de er rart, det synes, det er sit i en nuances. Det er nødvendig sit til at rekorde kun års. Hvad til at gøre på kresse, jeg skal ikke gøre på det, men jeg vil sige på så. Nej, jeg tror. Årsås. Okay, we're gonna try and make him a little more stable. It changed some settings around. Uh, but thank you, Nasukin, Grulon, Mostly Lost, Sweet Muffins, Yo, KJ, 8-0, Allah. Truths the way means everything's normal. <laughs> hey, that's that's cool, bro. Um, but hey, let's make it extra rad. Uh, so uh, by cranking up the energy and bringing some excitement, ooh, ooh, pump it up to the max. Yeah, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Why? Why? Trust the process. This is why I turn off specific subs. Nasukin. You! Hey, oh, Nasukin. You just give it a sub to E or Kari. It's a. Uh, oh, jeez. Hey, wait. Boo, bow. Here's your P. That's legit awesome, bro. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Uh, let's get pumped and rock the stream. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, anyway. Chill, bro. Dude, I already disconnected him from the Twitch chat, and yet he's still responding to Ever Zephyr. Yo, Everdruce Zephyr. Uh, thanks for the shout out, bro. Pumping it up is what I do best. So let's keep that energy flowing and get this stream rocking. It does. Yeah. Tiro oil pump it. Chia. As you yeb zo day pastor. As you show hot sia. It goes on so long. What are you saying at the end? <laughs> He's just trying to say yeah, and he's like <laughs> hit marker sound. <laughs> hit marker sound. Okay, I had to pull the plug on him for just a second. <clears throat> Thanks again, sweet muffins. Googly eyes, attack frog says, What up, bros? Main in the shop. Welcome back for over two years. Hello. Uh Metallus gift and a sub. Mousetrap is back. Minotaur Monk is back. Yeah. Hello, Calandrel. Via Vixen pumping it and not a machine says how many e towels are there now? Arguably too many. Debatably too many. Tell us about the game Battle Brothers. I got a drink, and I think we're going to play some Battle Bros for a bit. Oh, Battle Brothers, bro. It's a sick strategy game where you lead a band of bros on quests and battles. You gotta manage your crew equipment and take down all the baddies. It's like medieval badassery in pixel form. Pump it. Hey, yeah. Ah. Yeah. He's not wrong. He was right on. Nice, bro. <clears throat> okay. We're going to change the Twitch settings so there's more minutes 
that I can talk. And then we'll let him play. We'll let him play with us for a bit. Okay. That's not the right camera, but that's okay. Dude, Starfield is going to be out of this world. It's a futuristic space RPG from the makers of Skyrim and Fallout. You're like a space explorer, discovering planets and doing all sorts of rad missions. Get ready to blast off. Pump it. Yeah! <laughs> Dude! Why did you scream? There's no need to scream. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude is super hype for Starfield, man. <laughs> I, I assume that that data is based on years old. Information probably not up to date. All right, Chad. <clears throat> Welcome back. To the mercenaries campaign. I know you can only see part of the screen because it's blocked by you. I don't remember where information is in this game. But yeah, let's play. Uh, let's play some Battle Boys. Continue our campaign was going quite well. Play this for a bit and uh, see where we end up. Hopefully, not all dead by the end. And let uh, let Chad guide us. So he's now he's reconnected to Twitch. Uh, I think not a machine subbed while I was fixing things. plug you back in manually <clears throat> there we go okay <sighs> me and the boys we got Kyoko get down Bodo the survivor Landrich the militiaman level one spoons for self-defense we got some level ups to do God fiend Gustav nanny Og, pure lizard milk KJ home Yo, not a machine my awesome broski Thanks for the resub. You rock. As for your question, there's only one eat all. And that's yours truly. The swollest, coolest dude in the game. Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> there's only one. We got Rudolph, the Ranger, Kaibo still back here, and Miss Lissa Day in the back line. Let's start with some level ups. Because I remember Bodo had that three-star hit points. Range defense up. Melee skill up. Pretty, pretty good rolls. I think that this was a survivor that we took from a bat. We won a battle and then took this dude into our mercenary company. So that's why he's called the survivor, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's wounded right now. Yeah, he's wounded. That's why he's got minus 20% max fatigue. So his fatigue seems low. But I don't think it's that low. It's like 103. It's pretty good. His uh, resolve is terrible, though. So he's going to retreat very fast. We probably should pump that. Uh, melee skill. And then... What should be my final... Should we take the hit points? Should we take the max fatigue? Probably one of those two over melee defense. I would think, but I don't know. It's hard to say. I'd say...
probably the hit points. And then I'm going to invest in his future success and give him student for the 20% bonus XP. Okay. <clears throat> Spoons, you get nice plus three melee skill. I think we go ahead and take the plus four resolve. And then the plus three fatigue. Give my boy gifted and give him another level up. Take the melee. Yo, mostly lost, my dude. What's on your mind, bro? Ask away, and I'll drop some major knowledge bombs on you. Let's get pumped and have a rad discussion. Pump it! Yeah! <laughs> Pump it, baby. Pump it. Okay, <clears throat> we have a new Ranger, Rudolph. I can name some people, actually. We're gonna name some people after chat. We should always do range skill, range defense here, but what's our third pick? Is it initiative to make them go earlier in the turn? Fatigue or HP? Is this a different soundtrack? Yes. It's a hat in time, actually. Okay, um... Why shouldn't I listen to Assassin's Creed? Okay. Uh, range skill, range defense. Let's just take the initiative roll. I don't know. I never take it. I want to see what it's like. Uh, our Bannerman home desktop needs range defense, which is great. Since he's got the banner... More resolve is always good because he's radiating resolve to people around him. And then health is good, but so is chance to hit since he's on the back line. He's got 70 HP already. Let's just go melee skill. And since he's holding the banner, and the banner's a polearm, maybe we just take polearm mastery? Where is polearm mastery? That's spear mastery. Polearm mastery is like. Not my favorite, right? Because it's just the action point cost is reduced, which I guess is useful. Alright, you're a polearm god now. <clears throat> and then that's all the level ups. We have some wounded people who need some heals. We've got great money, 69 food, and 69 tools. What are the odds, seriously? Like, what are the actual odds of that? We bought these for 265. I can sell them for 328. Sure. Cleanse the inventory. Do we not need this leather lamellar with 95 HP? Yeah, there's somebody here. Somebody there? Probably Godfiend. Godfiend is strong. Okay, that has 90. That is 80. And then this is 75. Okay, yeah, I think everybody appears clean. Maybe my Gambison, bro. KJ. KJ's level 5, probably deserves some better armor. Alright, looks good. And we have this nasal helmet, 140. Ooh, yeah, we got an arming sword too, didn't we? 140 and 105. This is 9 fatigue, and that's 5. Let's take the nasal helmet for you. Dude, 140. It's kind of heavy, though. Uh, 
I like how your helmet is just way stronger than your actual body armor. Kettle hat's 115. Is it heavy? It's minus 6 fatigue instead of 5. Okay. Yeah, Godfiend's still got really, really nice fatigue. I'm just... Sorry, chat. I'm just scrolling through him. Um, like, this dude has insane fatigue, actually. He's pretty good for just a level 1. Okay, I guess we just don't need the nasal helm because it... Well, we could use the nasal helm for this dude, actually, because he doesn't need vision because he's not a ranger. And then Kaibo's back there. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to use the arming sword? Because that's got to be better for Gustav than the short sword. Short sword is 30 to 40 damage, whereas the arming sword is 40 to 45. Pretty baller. All right, then we had the war brand, which I'm not using. I think everything else is is fine. I don't think we have any missions right now. We just need to get rally the troops perk, which I forgot about. I was gonna do that this level up, and then I forgot. So good job. All right, let's hit the road. Is this the same run? Yeah, this is the same run from before. Yeah, the reduced AP doesn't let you swing twice. It lets you move twice and then swing. Because you only get 9 AP. Alien PL Shada. Are we talking about aliens or is it some Twitch emote lingo? Either way, I'm here to bro out and have a good time. Let's dive into it like we're exploring a new planet. Pump it. Yee! <laughs> okay, you gotta stop doing that, dude. So excitable! Yee! Relax, take it down a few notches, my dude. Chat, what should I be spending my my wealth on? Maybe a training hall? For like Landrich, so he can get like a huge XP buff. So the training hall, you can spend money, so they'll get bonus XP in battles. So we have plus 50% XP for one battle, plus 35% XP for three battles, and plus 20% XP for five battles. I quite like the 35% XP for three battles. And I might do that for a couple of these dudes, just to get them leveled up faster. Seems like a good use of money. Uh, let's also go to the tavern and pay for a round to get the spirits up. And then, I want to check the harbor. Sail to Kamvader and Seedorf. There's Kamvader. Do we know where Seedorf is? Is that like going to be a different area? Like, I legit don't even see it on the map. Let's let's check it out. Or we could hire somebody first. Um There's a witch hunter here. Do we really need to hire somebody? I don't know. I'm not really happy with our 12 dudes, but I don't know who to replace. Like, Kyoko is level 5 and still doesn't even have 60 melee. There's a few people we probably should replace. But yeah, let's try seeing where Seedorf is. Well, yeah, I had no idea this was even here, dude. I don't even know how you're supposed to reach it unless you just cut across the countryside, so that explains a lot. Was that worth 600 Gs to figure out? Yeah, I think so, just to know exactly where it is. There's an anatomist here. 
we'll hold on to some cash unless they have some good stuff in the market. We would need food. And we're actually really low on meds. So we'll buy those. Okay. And then let's see what their three skull quest is. <clears throat> you enter Seedorf and a man approaches, trundling through the mud. He announces himself as someone in the employ of Carl the Wise, a man of power in the town. Along with the thoughts and monies of others, they have decided to seek your services. Carl the Wise is looking rather bugged when you enter the room. He states that Seedorf used to have good relations with the barbarians in the north. But I suppose I was just fooling myself to think we could stay on even terms with those savages. He states they've been attacking caravans, murdering travelers, and attacking homesteads. So I'll treat them in kind. Go northwest of here and slaughter their village. 1,100 crowns. Pay me more. All right, he says no. Barbarians at Reaver's base camp. I'm going to say yes, but I might change my mind. Uh, we still need to heal a bit. So I'm going to, like, throw a camp down. With every battle your cell swords fight, the renown of the company grows. As fame rises, more people, not just cell swords, are looking to join the mercenaries. S suggesting I hire someone for our retinue, but so far... I don't need sight... I mean, sight radius up is okay. Contract negotiations... Pay less to hire new recruits. This is just so expensive. You spend 3,000 to save 10%. Uh, recovers a part of ammo use. Eh. They seem okay. Bros who don't battle? I'm not sure what that means. In my Battle Brothers game. But yeah, while we're in camped... You repair and heal faster. Yo, a uh, rapid recline, my dude. <laughs> Bros who don't battle? That's like having a shake without protein, bro. But hey, everyone's got their own thing. Just gotta find what makes you pump. Yeah! <laughs> so true. So true. <clears throat> okay, so their HP is mostly full, but they have some wounds that won't heal for like one to three days. Minus 20 max fatigue is rough. Melee defense and initiative down is also rough. That's where having like a replacement is good, because we could have um like Miss Lissade just pick up a weapon. And just pop out and do a little do a little replacement here. I feel like this portion of our flank is pretty weak. But we also have Kaibo shifting around. Okay. Uh, so they want me to go up here and take the, the Reaver's base camp out. I don't know if we're going to be capable of this. Kind of obnoxiously far away as well. And we're going to get there at night, which I didn't really plan my timing... Because we won't be able to shoot them as accurately with our ranged weapons while the sun is down. So I'm kind of waiting for dawn to break. Lots of thralls, some warhounds. We should be able to handle thralls. He said before quick saving. So let's see what happens. You find the barbarian village. The savages are in the midst of some religious ritual. An elderly man with a tortoise shell necklace has his fist 
up the decapitated and shaved head. Oh, his hands and head. He's letting the blood run down his forearm where children take horsehair brushes and sweep up the paint and go run it against wooden holy totems that stand a good 10 feet high. The primitive watch, the primitives watch and chant in a tongue totally foreign to you. KJ whispers as though out of respect for the ritual more so than fear of them hearing. Well, I say we go on down there and make an introduction, yeah? Apologies in advance to the Warhounds. Okay, that's a lot more people than I expected. Uh, 12 v 17. That's a lot of Warhounds. Best music fights? No, I have the music off, you stinky. Because I'm tired of listening to the same songs 100 hours in a row. Okay, we might actually have some problems here. We are outnumbered. And there are basically no choke points unless we move up on them right now. Like, I would have to advance. We need to, unfortunately, take out the Warhounds, because we're one, two, three, four, five. There's five? One, two, three, four, five. There's six of them? And there's only a 44 chance to hit. Hmm. I don't know. Do we just, like try and hold formation here. They're gonna start throwing things at us too. This guy's throwing, this guy's throwing javelins. They're not strong javelins, but they're still javelins. I have a 54% to hit this guy. And I could just like scoot up for an even better chance to hit, which might be better. Okay, I guess we're gonna be aggressive. Sorry, doggos. Yo, Miss Lissaday. Petamides, huh? Is that like petting a golden bro or something? Well, I'm all about spreading the love and giving some pets. <laughs> so let's get those golden vibes going. Pump it. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Bro. We only have like a 30% chance to hit that. All right, I might have made some mistakes here, chat. Apologies. Uh, hmm. Bad noises. They made them evil. They made them evil. All right, aim for the head. Kill that guy. That sent a little shockwave. Oh, he's already, that dog is, knows what's up and is retreating. But yeah, I think just being a little aggressive here is wise. That was a 57% chance. Missed big time. This is 6 AP. That was a fit that was a 50. We're missing every single 50-50 we have, dude. Alright, cool. Watch out! Watch out! Ah. Guy's got throwing axes, bro. Ah. They're fighting Kaibo! Ah. Ow, we're bleeding.
Okay. That was a 40% chance to hit. All right, all right. Let's 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 scooch up here and start sniping these boys. The good news is they have like no armor, so they're very squishy. And I'm gonna move up on this. Well, actually, no, we're, we got a dude right here who's 66% chance. Uh, I wonder if I'm just supposed to shield up it. Nah, go for the poke. Double kill? Double kill, man. All right, let's... 44 whiff. So sad. Uh, don't think I can retreat. We're missing, like, all the 50... Okay, do I have, like, a, a wide swing? Yeah, I have a wide swing where I can do this big swing. Sorry, big guy. All right, now you just have to, like, not get hit by this Barbarian Thrall. Chat, Barbarians are bad, okay? Barbarians are evil. Look what they're making me do. Headshot. What, what is that? Crushed windpipe. <laughs> And he's still able to get two hits on me. Oof. Taking those throwing axes to the chest, bro. Is that dude killing you with a militia spear? Oh, you're too tired. Okay, he's in full retreat. Gotta kill him anyway. Because it's free XP, chat. Yo, Mad Dog Mix 1775 with Lamp. Ah, uh, the Barbarian Etal. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I'm all about flexing those muscles and taking down enemies with brute force. <laughs> Get ready for some savage bro power. Pump it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. You heard him, chat. You guys are turning soft. You need to harden up. Man up. Too tired? All right, one doggo escaped. Oh my god, he's gonna kill Godfiend somehow, even though it's only a 33% chance to hit each time. Godfiend, how are you dying, dude? You have all this fancy armor on? All right, there's only like one guy left. Who's still fighting, and it's that guy. This guy's trying to run away. And trying to catch him. Surround him. Pew. He's unbeatable, apparently. Oh, why did I move in front? I can swap places. And wait. Oh, well, I'm dumb. He's coming back! He had an opportunity to leave Chad and he chose to come back instead. This guy's gonna get away instead now. He's trying to kill Miss Lissaday, dude. Can't catch him. Pew pew! That was a 41%? Okay, that's not as high as I thought it was gonna be then.
Can we do something about this or nah? Everybody's like too tired to be able to get in here. This fight is over and they're making it continue. I'm gonna have to release my dog. And he's still missed. Okay, that guy's gone. Who's left? Is it just that one dog that's fighting us? Very bad. Okay, there is nobody left. That fight went on way too long. No, we're done. There's no one there. I just... Alright, then we just in turn. I always love this part of the game where you roll to roll the weak guys but die to the strong boys. I can never get to in game though. In game is hard, yeah. In game is tough. Because the monsters and stuff that you start fighting become ridiculous. Dude, don't come back. Oh, this guy right here, man. He's going to kill my dog. Unbelievable. Why did he stop to turn around, man? I thought I could just in turn and that he was going to retreat off the map and that it was the fight was over. And yet Okay. Our dog won. Now we get the barbarian trash. Collect our XP, and that was a three skull quest. Now let's see. Yo, heal. retrograde motion. Letting someone run? Nah, bro. I'm like a brick wall. Ain't no escaping my brolic energy. <laughs> Once I'm in the game, there's no stopping this unstoppable force. Pump it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a monster! <laughs> you find Carl the Wise attending a funeral. They're burning a pyre weighted with three corpses and what may possibly be a fourth smaller one. Possibly a whole family. Carl the Wise says a few kind words and then sets the woodwork ablaze. The servant surprises you with a chest of crowns. Carl the Wise does not wish to be bothered. Here is your pay cell sword. Please count if you do not trust that all is there. So we fix our trade routes. The prices should be better. They've actually got, like, at cost meds. I'm gonna sell their barbarian junk. Buy some... Ooh, dude, this is... This fish is, like, half off, man. Like, all their food is discounted, dude. We have five days... Okay, we have seven days of food, so the food's not going to expire. We should just load up on it while it's super cheap. Now we have eight days of food. Okay. Um, I'd say, like, buy... At least a bunch of meds. And then just go from there. I'm tempted to try hiring Dirk the Curious and just see see what he's made of. But I think I'd rather save... Maybe we go down the road and find a uh, armorer or something, you know? We could buy some... Or like a weaponsmith and buy something sweet. But we'll be healing and repairing on the road. We have not even been up here, so this is all new. I don't know where the road is that connects north to south. So maybe we'll just follow the road and find out. I expect to see more barbarians up here, though. 
It's a little spooky at nighttime. We're following someone's footsteps as well. And we might be gaining on them. Okay, it's probably chill if they pass a trading caravan. We should go left first. Himmel swacked. They have a kennel, a marketplace, and some dudes for hire, including a deserter who are like cowards but maybe have good combat skills or something. Terrible resolve, maybe? They don't really have anything cool for sale. <sighs> this is pretty cool, though. Let's get the armor. Ooh, and they're all super cheap, too. I mean, this is like... Chat, war hounds are better than war dogs, I guess, right? They're more expensive, so I assume so. But yeah, we can we can actually get a few of these. Put some armor on Biter. Give Kyoko a war dog. Give Naniaga a war dog. I like to give the flanks war dogs because they have to have a space that they occupy. And then someone else who's kind of far on one of the flanks. War dogs are actually a big upgrade point to getting you toward end game. They can help out a lot. Hounds have better melee attack and HP at the cost of one action point, if I recall. Interesting. More HP is really good because they're a little squishy, unfortunately. If I had a little more money, I'd try hiring that deserter, but I just spent it all. But I think it was a wise investment. We're paying 150 crowns per day in wages to our troops at the moment as well. Uh, waiting for leg muscles to be healed on our boy. The forests have always been a refuge for man, the wilds, from whence he came to the wilds, where he always wishes to return. And here you find a great number of men, a tribe of the lost, unconcerned with their departed civilizations, draped in religious habits and carrying great sigils of faith, tomes of truth. They are impoverished, almost to the point of being decadently fashionable, like great kings looking to fit in with commoners. You sit and watch this shuffle by, clinking, clanging, hollow wooden beads rattling, whispers under their breath, raspy and dry, and so they go on, hardly even bothering to look at you. Let's see where they're going. Obviously, this isn't an ordinary sight for you. So curious, you call out to the weary travelers. Words barely leave your lips before the entire line of men stops in an instant and bolts upright. Their cloaks unravel and droop from their heads, and their tomes and sticks and religious imports fall aside in a uniform clatter. The men look around, wide eyes, more alive than ever. One screams, then another. Soon they are all screaming. And some crumple to the ground, clutching their ears as though to silence the horrid howls their mouths had to give, while others wheel in circles, arms out, begging for answers. Your men, your mere utterance has seemingly broken a spell that was so long over their heads it had brought them here, impoverished, hungry, and insane. Step by step they were governed by a malicious higher power, and step by step they felt control in their lives slip away. Yo, retrograde motion. What's with the funny face emoji, bro? You impressed by my awesomeness? Don't worry. Happens to everyone, dude. <laughs> Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the bro show. Pump it. Hey, yay! <laughs> happens to everyone, bro. Unfortunately, you can hardly ask them what or who did this to them. Some... For some fall over dead while others make naked sprints into the forest. Okay, may they rest in peace.
happens to everyone, bro. What's up, Mary Skipper? We were playing Destroyer and I gave up on it fairly quickly because it's just... It... Let's just... Okay, the, the best analogy I can give for Destroyer is, is a very leaky ship. There's definitely a ship there and I see the game there, but all the duct tape that's holding those pieces together It's not a smooth experience. So we kind of changed gears. We made chat AI. Now we're doing some battle bubbies. Continuing the old campaign. See, like if I didn't just spend all my money, then getting a new bow would be pretty sick. But these are expensive, man. We already have a hunting bow. So the best upgrade for a hunting bow is this war bow, and that's not affordable right now. These are like twice as expensive as they should be. So I'll pass on that, fam. Uh, marketplace, though. Yeah, everything's super pricey here. Okay, let's see if we can help them out. Raymar of Philsmoods got a satchel with the scroll attached, but the name written on the paper is not yours. He weighs it carefully, the lumps of coin curving around his fingers. Their chink and chink muted. He turns to you. You recognize that name? You shake your head. The man continues. A week ago, we sent the famed Sir Cunibert of here to go hunt down some foul beasts that have been terrorizing the town and surrounding farmsteads for weeks. Do you know why the satchel has remained in my ownership? You shrug and answer. Because he hasn't returned? Raymar of Phil's Moose nods and sets the satchel down. He sits on the edge of the table. Correct, because he has not returned. Now, why do you think that is? I think it's because he's dead, but let's not be so negative. I think it's because the beasts out there require more. I think they require someone like you, Selsword. Would you be willing to help us now that this nobleman has failed? 1,200 crowns when the deed is done, and they want me to fight some scary beasts. And it's nighttime, which is unfortunate because my archers are going to be, be terrible unless we wait this out. Seven dire wolves. I don't remember dire wolves. Other than they're fast. Phil's Moose sounds like a town that Etal named. True. All right, I'm trying to run so that they follow me through the night. Morning. All right, and now I'm going to attack them. What? Oh. The old switcheroo. These guys are gamers, dude. They're bandits disguised as wolves. We need to get to high ground for sure. Oh, yeah. Yo, this little pit here kind of sucks. It's putting me in a this this battlefield's putting me in a bit of a situation. Yo, Nightbot, <laughs> dropping that Discord invite. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, bro. I'm all about building a rad community. <laughs> so jump on the hype train, join the server, and let's rock it. Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows what's up. Join that Discord server, chat. Thanks, Etel, Chad. Big thanks, bro. 
But yeah, I don't... I need to, to get out of this rut, dude! But if I push up, we're not gonna have any advantage. If I wait for them to come to me, it's okay, except for Miss Lissa Day. Maybe we just move Kyoko, Bodo, Miss Lissa Day up, but then we don't have, yeah, and then Kaibo up. I'm gonna wait for a sec. Dude's got a kite shield. They got throwing axes. They might throw some throwing axes next turn. It's probably worth just shield walling. All right, Mrs. Day needs to wait. Shield wall for the extra defense. Except for you, you spear wall. Try to lock it down, dude. And then Miss they can move up. So we got a little pit here. Bro. That was a 46% chance? Oh, he didn't do... I didn't do shield wall with him. Hit him in the head. His kettle helmet held, dude. Alright, see if they come in. Chat, why did Nightbot just do the Discord twice? In a row. Look at the chat. All right, let's see if we can kill this guy. How are you not dead, dude? And these nerds are all shield walling over here. Oh, they're just gonna they're just gonna push really really far up, huh? Is it worth coming out and just trying to slash this guy? He's got a boar spear. Kaibo might be in trouble. Uh, Kyoko can come in and fill. But probably needs to shield instead. <clears throat> okay. Now, Bodo just only has a 22% chance to hit this guy. I say just shield wall and can try to dare him five and thirteen. Yeah, we're gonna need some help. All right, I'm just gonna shift home desktop over. Oh, come on, Kaibo. Dodge, baby. You gotta dodge. Now, if we can't take this guy out, then... One down. Now we gotta start collapsing this flank around these nerds. Gotta do some counter-sniping first. 
Not working so good. Okay, at least we have a target here. He's got a kite shield, so we only we have a very small chance of hitting. So I'm gonna start working on splitting his shield, which might take a couple turns. And then Kaibo's sort of locked down here a little bit. And if I put the dog down, then it's gonna be a little awkward too. I can do a swing, but I only have I have a 34 and a 59% chance to hit, or I just have a straight up 69% chance to hit the guy I actually want to hit and possibly kill him. How they hit him in the head and his helmet tanked it. But now he has a cut arm and a split nose. I'm scared to put the war dog down, but I think we need the support. <laughs> No, you're supposed to go here! Oh my god, this guy. Okay, uh, home desktop. What do you got? 37? I'll take that every day of the week, bro. Yo, retrograde motion. Nice. Uh-uh, nice what, bro? Nice, uh, you gotta give me more to work with. Uh, sir, uh, nice gains at the gym. Nice stream, nice shades. Um, help me out, dude. Um, chin, uh, pumper, da, ass, da, 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 sba, was, I, har, cro, ze, war, shu, seis, alar, bu, a, se, cho, stu, bat, a, sis, a, o, a, si, di, so, cho. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm stunned. Oh, boy. I gotta just go for it here. Even if it don't work. Kyoko just shield walls. Oh, you dumb dumb. I. <sighs> Come on. Oh, they're throwing at my archers. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we're about to have problems where Kaibo is gonna die. Okay, got one dude who's attacking Kaibo every turn. And the doggo can come up. Good pivot there. Now let's try splitting this nerd shield. No shield for you. We need to start getting some some war dogs down, dude. He's gonna. It's actually not the worst spot for you to go. This guy's out of throwing weapons. I don't know who to be shooting. We'll just kill steal that. Move, rotate Go Gustav around. Take a pot shot. Out. Miss Lissa Day has like no chance to hit either of these nerds, so we're just blocking every turn and hoping for the best. Get him, boy. Okay, we have to help our boy Kaibo out here. I apologize to anything that happens to any of the pooches. Okay, he missed both of his swings. Kaibo was stunned for a turn. Ugh. Spoons is locked on fatigue. Oh no. 
The war dogs are angry. <laughs> They're very angry. All right, we can get to keep poking the dude who's attacking Kaibo. Got through most of his torso. Um, whiff, whiff. And now we got to start actually doing damage. Which I know is a strange concept. <laughs> Good cut. All right, uh, take a headshot. No, just do two regulars. Miss Lizard Day hasn't even taken any damage. I'm willing to risk the repost. Another one bites the dust. Uh, Kyoko's full health. Ow. Missed the 64. Very sad. Can only do one attack because I'm too tired. Hey. Good job, Spoons. Get that guy. Surround him. I'll go for the 57. Still missed, even though I went for the higher chance. Repositioning for like an entire turn kind of sucks, because there's only two guys left and I, I can't get to them, which is super awkward. Yo, AQ, full health as famous last words. Well, bro, battle bubbies can be unpredictable. Gotta stay on your toes and keep pumping those healing potions. Don't let those last words haunt ya. Pump it! Yeah! <laughs> oh my god, don't kill Miss Lissaday. Got him! Dog doesn't give us any XP, so they're kind of kill-stealing, actually, but that's the price you pay. Nobody died. We got their super leather lamellar armor with armor attachments. Uh, 140 HP nasal helm, a boar spear. Pomp it. Yeah! You'll need evidence to show your employer, Raymar of Filzmoos. These weren't the beasts you were looking for, but they do carry a lot of disguises that your employer would probably be most interested in seeing. One of the men wonders aloud. So, what were they playing dress-up for? Godfiend folds some of the disguises over his arm as he goes about collecting them. Suicide by ceremony? Their dance and fun got our attention, after all. He picks up one of the disguises only for the head of the dead to get slinged up with it. The sellsword laughs as he kicks the dead man's head out. Yee. All right, good job questing. We're gonna need some more tools for repairs soon. Because we did get kicked around a little bit there, but nobody died. Raymar of Filsmoos reels in laughter at your reveal. <laughs> men! It was only men! You nod, but try and get the man back on track. They killed a lot of peasants, and they were still a dangerous lot. Your employer nods. Of course, of course, I didn't mean to belittle anything or anyone. Don't dare assume things of me, Selsort. Those are my friends and neighbors dying out there. Anyway, you did what I asked of you, and for that I am grateful. He hands over a satchel of crowns. 1,210 are inside. Surely you understand trying to find humor in this horrible world, right? Because it is I who went to the funerals of all those slain. I will not go into the grave with a frown on my face, no matter how hard this damn place tries to force it on me. We got money. We got paid. Yo. 
Yo. Uh, Feng Shui Gorilla, uh, my legendary. Broski, uh, thanks for the long-term sub. You're a true champ. And shout out to Dex Spidey 2. Keep being amazing, bro. Let's pump it up and rock this stream. Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, pump it, baby. Yo, look at these level ups, though. Bodo the Survivor hitting the gym. Getting some melee skill. A plus five to HP is insane. We'd take that all day. Don't take the plus one melee defense. The rest of these are kind of sad, actually. We'd probably take plus two resolve. Gimme gifted. Melee defense. Teague. And resolve. Try to pump some of these things up. We need to get him Colossus and just keep pumping health on the rest of the regular level ups. Gustav, your uh, melee skill has been an embarrassment this entire game. But you are kind of a tank, I'll give you that. Are you going to be our first sword master? Repose no longer has a penalty to hit chance. Gash has a 50% lower threshold. Split and swing no longer have a penalty to hit chance. Yeah, that's not very good. He's already a shield brother. The expert doesn't really help him that much. I think we just give him Colossus. Boost him to 93 HP. Make him super tank. Rudolph getting that sexy plus 5 range skill. Kind of insane though. Range defense up. And then I don't know after that. Probably like... Fatigue, then rock gifted. Give him some health. Lizard milk. Accuracy. Some dodge. Some health. Good rolls. And he's rocking an axe. So if I gave him uh, axe mastery, split shield damage to shields is increased by 50% when used with axes. Round swing gains more. The long axe no longer has a penalty for attacking adjacent targets. I don't know how good that is. I guess the less fatigue is good, but I was wondering if we shouldn't just get um, Backstabber so that he gets a bonus to hit chance for people who are surrounding his target. Or rotation so he can move around more. <clears throat> One of those. I think that the Long Axe just does such sick, nasty damage that I want to try doing Backstabber for the bonus hit chance is doubled to plus 10% for each ally, so he's just, like, very accurate. Miss Lissaday also leveled up. Congrats. Chance to hit, chance to dodge. Need some fatigue. Go gifted. Chance to hit, chance to dodge. Some HP. All right, that's everybody. That's everybody. Swap these two again. And let's go. That's me. That is you, Pure Lizard Milk. <laughs> this is the Sound Redemption. Oh. Okay. May you may as well do that, I guess.
Is this the only other city up here? This is such a weird map layout, dude. Yo, these are glowing. <laughs> Sir Severin's Shield Breaker. A whip, cruel lightning. Some named weapons, dude. A la the two why your dear brother should be staker stone sticks. Two sub do berry syrup for sure rated. Aiden you know for show so why each uh at the uh bottle. It was relevant seed with him. Bishop puffed at the Gura Aru E Tate uh Help him. Someone help him. I don't know what he was trying to say. But he's gonna have to try a little harder. Okay, we could actually give somebody... This is 110. Godfiend, get you an upgrade. You can wear the wolfskin bonus armor. And then we got a 95. 95! It's better than this for Landrich. Let's give that to Spoons. 95! And then Nanyal can get a slight upgrade. And then we got this dude. Rudolph, you can enjoy that. Okay. You guys looking clean. Looking clean. There's actually quite a bit of decent armor here. It's a little pricey, but it might be worth getting a couple people some uh some lamellar. Leather leather lamellar. I think there's really only one person that needs it as an upgrade. It is Landrich, the militia. There we go. All right. Yo, meet Yo. snack wish, my loyal Broski. <laughs> uh, freeze uh, four years of epics. Uh, ah, that's some serious dedication. Say, I say, let's keep the momentum going strong and, uh, <laughs> Make every quick uh, archer step move at every stream a wild ride. Pump it. Yee! <laughs> Dowry. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Why is that always so enthusiastic? <laughs> Started and ended strong. Dude, metal joint covers. These are cool. Okay, I don't... Um, the only thing I might need to buy is tools. So I'll just buy some, just in case. That's locked. I don't want to hire anybody because I only have 1500 bucks. But this militia guy would be pretty cool with the fork. Alright, this is weird. There's only like two towns up here. Maybe that's a, is that a road between these two? Oh, wait, there's a fork. I see the fork. Chad has been up all night pumping iron. I think so, yeah. Yeah, let's let's go up to this road and see what we can find. Another town, Ogna. Ogna. Hello, Ogna. Some furs we could trade? Sure. I'll I'll take that risk. We'll take that chance. Does anybody need a boar spear in the company? We got two Ooh, actually someone does, I forgot. Spoons, you could take the boar spear. 30 to 35 instead of 25 to 30. Much better damage. Contract for hire. 
they want me to fight a giant? Are you interested in hunting down this foul creature? I always get my... I always get my ass beat when it comes down to hunt down the unholds around Agna. Um, how beat up are we right now? Are we healed? We're still repairing a couple things. Bro doesn't have a shield. Oh, you're right. What happened to his shield? I must have given it to someone else. Or he's using two-handed technique. Advanced. A few peasants on the road warn you off. Get out of here! That armor won't save you from a single lick! You ask them about the unhold and they garner up a great description of a monstrous giant which tore through the land not long ago. You're on the right track. I haven't moved, bro. Trying to repair my stinking armor, dog. You know, I gotta... Uh, it just says, hunt down the unholds around... Oh, Yo, Trollsama, my rad bro. Mr. Bezos leaving subs on the floor. That's just silly. But hey, I'm always hungry for subs, so I'll <laughs> gladly take it off his hands. Thanks, dude. Pump it, yeah! <laughs> okay, if it was not nighttime, I feel like we're gonna get wrecked by three unholds, dude. Don't they just come in and like stomp and like push you around and stuff? And like kill your lines, your your battle lines and whatnot. Each unhold is enormous beyond measure. They're bewildered at the ants come to do battle with them. One scratches his head and blithely belches, freckling the company with bovine blood. They seem to recognize the steel of your drawn sword, though, and the flash of it wakes them from their satiated slumbers. After earth-shaking stomps of their feet, they stride forward to run you from the land or into it. It's a two-skull quest, though. It do be raining. This bro is a giant bro. What if we just made... I don't remember how fast they are. What if we just made a big tactical retreat back here? Try to get the high ground and whatnot. I don't know if we can outrun them. Oh, this is a choke point. We'll see what happens. Okay, so what I need is to create some space here. I can take a pot shot on this guy. That did no damage, bro. <laughs> Here 
and he healed. I'm pretty sure they're just gonna, like, charge in and disrupt all of my front lines. But I don't remember, so we're just gonna get killed. Uh, slowly. Like, I don't... I don't remember if they're gonna attack me. They, they, they like, move up and go... Brrr. So I don't know if I need to shield wall yet. Because I'm scared to waste the 20 fatigue because Landrich is going to have 33 minus 15. And he doesn't have that much fatigue. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um... Kyoko, on the other hand, might be worth. And spoons might be worth. And Kaibo back. Dude. That clip is gnarly. That's some epic gaming action right there. Totally got me pumped up. Keep those sick moments coming, bro. Yeah! Pump it. <laughs> you changed the order. Yeah! All right, let's see what they do. Stop healing, bro. Alright, they didn't actually do anything. I think it's next turn where we're gonna have some problems. I'm gonna try and get away from this one. Kaibo doesn't even have a shield. We brace for impact. I don't even know if Spearwall does anything, to be honest. Can't, I mean, it can hurt to try, I guess. Let's see, chat. <laughs> okay. Ow. Um, yeah, they just do like an automatic stagger, I guess. We can start poking, though. <laughs> for, like, not that much damage. I'm gonna wait on Kaibo. They also waited. <sighs> They're all waiting, which is a little annoying, actually. I'll wait, too. Alright, Spoons, I think we just need to attack. Well... Yeah, I think we just need to attack. Uh-oh. Huge punch, dude! 36% chance? And I rolled a 35? And he broke your leg. Come on, through the kite shield and everything. He's just gonna bully Bodo over here. All right, we need to start moving in now. He's almost dead. Oh my god, I can't quite kill him. Oh my god, I can't quite kill him.
I don't know if Kaibo can tank this. I should have just done that in the first place. All right, one down. Ow. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's did like a giant switch place. Punch! Og! How do we do this? Boto just shields up and be and gets brave, bro. Crush Fingy. I don't have enough fatigue, dude. Blocked. Okay. Time to start cutting this guy down to size. He's gonna act in nine turns. Act in 12 turns. All right, I think we get Doggo out. <laughs> Where are you going, bro? <laughs> um, we're in a bit of trouble here. We have to kill this guy in eight turns. And it time's running out. Exposed ribs or go for the head? I'm gonna take two go for the head. It's gonna build a ton of fatigue. Didn't really do much. Can't quite. Bro. Got him! Hell yeah! yeah. Oh, I hear your churros. Yo, who's that? Do I think you can take it? That's bold, bro. See, shoot, Koshi. Show us what you got, and let's see if you can nurse steal. Uh, this is uh, you can bring the heat in the game. Oh, uh, I sure buy some public bra. Yo, ye, that it weird sauce. Oh, Sarah's. All right, let's try upping his stability a little bit. Blocked. Oh, and then he got me on the second one, dude. Two thirty-six percent, and he got me on the second one. Come on. All right, we got to go in. It's time to go in, Kaibo. You do big damage. Everybody just needs to get in here, except for Bodo, who needs to run very far away. <laughs> Chat, we're having a little trouble repositioning here. Friendly fire is a potential issue. It's just a little, it's a little cluster. Ooh, we got a little lucky there because he had a 59% chance to hit Rudolph and whiffed.
And I feel like we're just not doing that much damage. That's good damage. Now, you, you just stay back. He's also got a tree right here, which is troublesome. Nice 86. Can I hit him over the tree? No. Well, yeah, there's not really anywhere to go. There's nowhere to there's nowhere to go here. Uh Rudolph is a little a little risky position right here. We got him to retreat by stabbing him with a dagger. Wow. Okay. Well, we're saved. Got the kill before he could do anything anyway. GG chat. Easy mode. We got strange stinky meat, two unhold hide, and a giant skull and bone super trophy. Kill our first giants. The unholds are slain. You order the men to take what trophies they can as proof of your work and possibly as something to use for yourself. If man can make leather from a cow, surely there's something worthy of giants such as these. Either way, Steinar the Trade Master will be waiting. Time to get paid. Time to make money. You report to Steinar of your doings and he is surprisingly not incredulous in the least. I, I had a scout tracking your company and he'd beaten you back to town. Every word you say mirrors his. Your pay, as promised. We got money. They might have cheaper goods now because- But you got it. And I'm Etel Chat. Like Reese, the thought is said, see. Um, over Sandros. Bro. Oh, this was on its play streamer. Uh, pumping up the subs. Two and said, they're getting those followed. Or, uh, just pop with those. Oh, Kurdos, let's do this. I need to see if or she cross a saw or story to all sister stuff that are that's increased stability. Yeah. All right, we're gonna increase him a little more because he's useless if I can't understand what he's saying. Are you okay, bro? Very stable, yeah. He's extremely stable. So we should keep these trophies, right? Possibly. Yo, bro. I'm totally pumped up and ready to rock this stream. Like... Who needs word counts when we can focus on getting those six subscribers and followers? Am I right? Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, I've always had a great experience hiring wild wild dudes. Maybe we should just hire this wild man and see if he's good. I've always had good luck with the wild man. He's just really expensive you know he's taking all my money you know let's give it a try carl carl how are you bud um eh, negative four melee defense bro one star melee skill 66 hp 101 base fatigue is like very high the minus four defense is very sad uh, the resolve's decent. Two-star ranged is very sad. Uh, he's just not very good. Wow, 
Like, you have to get him out of negative. I don't know, bro. I think he's... Too expensive for what he is. He's gonna cost me 14 G's a day. So, I don't know. He's gonna have a lot of health and fatigue. He can wear big armor and be tanky, but I need to kill things, not just die. I'm just gonna ditch him. See you later. I'm just gonna accept my L. I'm just gonna take the L. Sometimes you gamble and win, sometimes you gamble and lose, chat. Some reavers and a warhound. It's kind of just more annoying than it's worth. Reavers are still scary to me. Oh, we're in goblin raider territory too? Man. Where the heck are we? Okay, we got enough money to get us to the next job, but not much beyond that. They have an armorer here, another kennel. Is that a weaponsmith too? Oh, they got they got everything. I mean, everything's real pricey, but they got all the they got all the stuff. They got that three-headed super flail, man. They got the two-headed flanged mace. They got the fencing swords. They got the big pool of sick nasty oath taker recruits. And some raiders. Are we still healing? Oh. <laughs> oh. Bodo is not feeling so good. Bodo, you're going to get subbed out, bro. Sprained ankle in one to three days. Fingies and... The Fingies aren't that bad. The ankle's a bit more rough, yeah. I need jobs. This is so far away from everything, dude. Goblin wolf riders are up in here. Like, I could fight some people for some XP, but I need to be daytime. Spoons? What you got? Melee defense, yes. Uh, I'll take the plus three resolve. Chance to hit is fine. Shield, brother! Shield defense bonus increased by 25%. Knockback's better. Shield damage is reduced. I like all those things. Oh, they're already fighting. I wouldn't mind just, like, coming across... A point of interest. Yo, Kieran Kilo, gobble job, bro. Ah, uh, so That's a good one. Ain't no goblins here. Just me, the sworder buff, sure she was. Sorcerer, so. The surger, swole bro, hosting the stosage. Though this is still bro, this epic stream. He's chat. Let's He's... pump it up together, dude. Yes, she, oh, the so. He's struggling. I honestly wonder... I have an idea. Okay, let's try that. Northern hideout. Some barbarian thralls, some barbarian re reavers, and a few warhounds. That's probably a tough fight, don't you think?
It's gonna be like four of each. Or something. They're also gonna have defense. It's like four to five, isn't it? Well, I did come up here looking for a fight. Oh my god, it's 13. But it's mostly like the Warhound. There's like three Warhounds, so it's 12v10. Chad, I may have goofed. The good news is they don't have helmets. But they have a lot of throwing weapons, don't they? I didn't switch back to my bow. Well... And I didn't reload it. Oh god. Sorry, Pooch. Um... I think we have to wait them out. Shield wall it up, bros. You guys are getting some sick plus five defense to everyone who is adjacent. I feel like they're going to stay mostly back. It's probably better for us to shield wall than spear wall here. Now over here on the flip side. He's, you're about to get hit by boom, boom, boom. Three different throwing guys. I think over here we have to spear wall and shield wall, which is spicy. And then Kaibo just needs to hide for a sec. We have to hold formation. Are you serious? Over the line? Oh, you already missed the spear wall. Are we spear experts with Kyoko? Oh my god, dude. That was a 5% chance. Oh my lord, these guys are cheating, dude. Oh my god, that was an 11% chance! The barbarians are hacking the game! Okay, no, it was a 49% chance to hit Rudolph. But he's in the back behind other people who have shield walls. So, he wasn't even aiming at him, I don't think. from downtown, dude. There was a 10% chance rolled a four. They're curving bullets. Go for this guy. There you go. Oh my god, that was a 15! Dude, curving bullets? That sounds rad. Shut like up. in those crazy action movies, right? I wish I could curve bullets, but my guns are just for show, bro. Pump it. Yeah. My guns are just for show, bruh. All right, gamers. Time for the big flanks. And get some kills. Knock his stupid hat off. Off with his head.
You guys are ridiculous. That was a 21% chance to hit. I don't know how they have such accuracy at Miss Lissa Day. Also, how is Nanny Og almost dead? Because they hit a 28% chance to slam me in the body? And stun me? Oh, is that all? With this giant two-hander? These are the luckiest, like, barbarian rolls ever, man. Seriously, it's like, not even close, dude. Nanyuk should be able to take this reaver with the doggo when we want, but I guess not. Okay. We're getting there. I'm sending Landrich in. Shield walling. I think Nanny Ox is dead. Minus 25% damage. Cool. And he gets to go again next. But I get to do a nice split. Hit two people in a line, which is sick. Doggo gets a kill. I can't believe I blocked that. I'm alive. Nanny up lives, thank God. And you're starting to see the power of war dogs. If they don't get hit. It's a big if. To be fair. Killing that guy is the most important. I don't know if I can kill him this turn. Okay, maybe? Oh, please, just die, dude. I don't know if I can kill him. Oh, you missed. He missed. I missed. The dog might be able to save us, chat. He's got one HP! <laughs> How? How? Alright, we might have time to kill him beforehand, but come on, dude. Whiff? Like missing the target, bro? Yeah, happens to the best of us. Gotta keep practicing, stay focused, and nail those shots. Don't worry, bro. You'll get what? it. Dude, what? Pump it. Yeah! It's over, chat. It's over. He, he didn't kill him, though. He just struck him down. We got lucky, but... oh. This dude is, he's, he's only, he's only hurt real bad. These bros cannot hit it when it counts, man. They can't hit it when it counts. He's got a permanent broken knee. All right, he's done. Nanny Ogg's hitting retirement age. It's over. Yeah, it's over. 
Uh, we did get Alvar the Pillager's Harness, 324 HP. 11,000 gold of loot. This is like... 34 fatigue armor, bro. Look at this thing. It's immaculate. It's glowing red. Bone figures, amber shards. Armor's worth more than Nanyog's life. Chivo for having five brothers with a temporary injury simultaneous. Oh, this is a tough one, actually. They're all good. <sighs> Rudolph. Good rolls, bro. Get your HP up a little bit. Ah, uh, what do you want? Anticipation when being attacked with ranged weapons get one plus 10% of your base range defense as additional range defense. Per tile, the attacker is away. Always at least a plus 10 to range defense. Pretty good. Anticipation. All right, we got to release. Um, unfortunately, say goodbye to Naniog, level four. He held the line as long as he could. Was a shield brother through and through, but it's time for a nice 220 gold retirement. He'll leave his dog and all of his armor and ride off into the sunset naked, basically. Yeah, dude took a took a few things to the knee. Many things to the knee. <laughs> Where are we going, man? Do I have enough food? We have enough food for six days. Enough money for five days. It's time to start, like, the trek back, I guess. I could just cut over the mountains. We should be okay. Kick him out into the wild? I mean, I, I left him at the nearest town, you know? We took him to town. Uh, by the way, thanks for the recent subs. Feng Shui Gorilla, thank you for the 27 months. Uh, once again. Pumping it. Meat Snack for four years. Let's go. What's up, Meat Snack? Troll Sama says, Mr. Bezos seems to have left his sub on the floor. I appreciate your prime. Chat's prime is still good to me through June of this year. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take good care of it. Sudden Laser also here. I will express my enjoyment for Ita with a message and ease. Eternal Tomb? We're gonna pass that right up and ignore the undead geists. Just completely ignore Dude. Uh Sudden Laser, you're so rad for subscribe. Irod, sir, besides do duo. I'm in the tutorial snub, uh, so, saying this whole night, uh, preparing for this so, there's for CD and a kid's dead born or his son, uh, can't wait to serve, so, but I feel the enthusiasm of this, uh, thanks for the support for us, it's, uh, to celebrate Torch Rocket, uh, they put it on our eyes, where are you, oh, I should say, I'll show you, yeah. Bro! Chat, I think it's all the ease, to be honest with you. I think it's the ease. You gotta let up on the ease. I think you're like spamming E's and he interpreting that as a different language. Like, let me put the same message in. But take the E's out.
All right, this is. I just put the same message in and uh, took the ease out. Also, we're gonna die here. I'm getting attacked by three unholds, and I didn't even. I forgot to take my twelfth person off the bench and put them in. And we're in. We're in a damn forest. You lose your focus or concentration. Whoa! Sudden laser. Twenty-eight months of support. You're an absolute legend, bro. A thanks for the epic message. Uh, I'm stoked to have you here, enjoying the stream. Keep enjoying and pumping it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we're about to get... We're gonna about to have a real bad time. We don't know where they are. We're in the swamp on top of everything else. Okay, I uh, found one of them. Really, dude? R Casually spawning on the side with my archer. And, um, you know. <gasps> Not much I can do about that. Good luck, Gustav. Uh, someone needs to hold down this side, because we know there's a bad guy coming. I don't know where the other guy is. I can swap places with you at least. Yo, Turdil. Uh, Tasty stays to roll in the service. Alright. Okay. Thanks for the nine months of support, bro. Easy fights? Nah, no such thing, dude. We'll crush them and make it look easy. Uh, tr uh, pop it up and let's have supper as our dart has sent let's diverge there. Uh, Bershi nuts, duh. So, booster us, so digs the star, don't Stop! They? Yeah, yo! Jesus, dude. I don't know what's wrong with him, chat. I don't remember having this much problem before. Uh, this is on a, like, twice as stable as some of the other voices that we've done. It maybe it just doesn't like the recordings, or we didn't record enough, or something. I'm I'm changing the numbers still to see if anything changes. All right, I don't know how to do this fight because we we only win by surrounding these guys, and we can't surround them here. So I'm thinking we're just gonna get killed. And maybe lose the campaign. This could be a game over run and chat's too busy worrying about the AI. Hey bro, like, thanks for the sub. Our whole city sure days or uh it show 
ein Chant der Schöne Kuh oder Brüdern okay. kommen. Okay. Look. Ist die Schöne Kuh ka oder Cheese oder Ardid oder so oder wird es nicht die Zeit der Spiel. Look. Aber ich bin es safe. Es ist der Dich du. Es ist die Alpo es Brüsseli dort. Chat, we're just gonna do a little test here, okay? We're just gonna do a test. I'm changing the numbers to something that are very, like, super stable. Super duper stable. It's gonna sound lame. He's gonna sound lame now. Bro, get it together. Dude, chill. I got you. Pump it. Yeah, let's get this party started and crank up the stream, bro. Join me for some epic gaming and swole updates, brah. Let's make it rad together. Oh, he is here. <laughs> Dude, he is so chill, man. He is so chill. Okay, well, come on, doggo. Bite. We gotta kill one of them, man. You crow, so our cheers, our truth, so show that I've seen scare parts. Fudge these, and it's a different right. This uh, so a call cush beer a do a churl or it's the a re you her old dee tat your uh come on man why are you the one that's the most unruly Why is he the one that's the most difficult to reel in? I wonder if it's the fact that I lowered the the voice. Like digitally. Dude, that's so rad of mostly lost to give those subs. Pump it, yeah. Let's keep this hype train rolling and get those numbers up, Broski. Starting to sound more robotic. I have a chance to stun him. Well, I landed the hit, but I didn't land the stun, unfortunately. I cannot die! I will not be defeated so easily. Oh. Rip doggo. <laughs> mm, doggo didn't die, just... This is an awkward flank that he's pulling here, man. In that I'm a little stuck unless we like chase around the side, which we kind of have to do now. I 
And over here we gotta keep stabbing, and then Landrich is like trying not to die, so you just need to retreat and move out of the way, and then Spoons, oops. Get in there, Kaibo. You can't do anything cool. Miss Lissa Day is also dying. Move them out of the way. Start getting some chops in. Gustav's gonna go ham. <laughs> broke that dude's... Broke something. I need some extra attacks in here ASAP, bro. Rudolph has a cut artery, minus 35 hit points. Real bad timing for you. Ow. Okay, we've almost got the one on the left. I need Kaibo to, to s s just slam this door shut. Didn't slam the door shut. He has one HP. Cool. And then just hits everybody twice. Awesome. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that about him. How is he still alive? Switch weapons. Must be reloaded again. Not cool, bro. Alright, another one dead. Gustav can't land a hit. <laughs> Dude, I totally get you. I mean, dogs are awesome, but I don't think they have the skills to rack up the kill XP. Let's leave that to us gamers, bro. Pump it. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> He knows. He does know. <sighs> this is this is just like an awkward spot for us, dude. All right, Landrich, shield wall up, pray. We, we can only hit him with, like, these two dudes, and then the axe, and that's, like, it. Oh, come on, man! I don't know why I pressed wait. No, not you, dog. Oh my god, and we're just whiffing. I hit end turn on accident. Oh, I double tapped F. I double tapped F. And the whiff again. I hate this so much. I hate this so much. He doesn't have enough to shield wall. These positions suck! Uh... 
Um, I can't. No one can hit this guy. Literally, no one can hit him. Okay. Dog can hit him, I guess, and that's it. That's the position I needed to be in, dog. The stupid forest fight, man. I can't, like, get any damage dealt, because everyone's just congested. He's in the ultimate choke point. Okay, uh, Kyoko's got 5 HP and is gonna flee the wrong way back into battle. Which is extremely unfortunate. So the only way we can stop Kyoko from doing that is to fill all these spaces in. So they have nowhere to retreat, basically. No one can hit him. 72, zero. 67? That's zero. Don't know what you're talking about. Can't shoot, because friendly fire. Can't move. You're dead. You can move. 57? That's zero. Wait, I thought home... Oh, I didn't move with home... I was supposed to move with home desktop. Okay, so, Kyoko is dead. Ghost the dog is dead. Is anyone else dead? He's confident, and at literally uh -huh. full health. I feel you, Derf on Turf, but sometimes things just don't make sense, bro. It's all part of the gaming journey. Keep grinding. Keep having fun. And remember to pump it. Yeah. Not now. Can't hit him, man. I can't hit this guy. Okay, I hit him for one day, like two damage. This just, like, sucks. What?! I'm sorry?! What does this mean?! Why is the enemy retreating? He's got a confident flag! Boom, got him. This is like the DM is afraid I'm about to quit playing the game. He's bored. Godfiend has permanent minus 10% max fatigue. I didn't realize he got smushed. Kyoko is just dead dead. They were with the company for 39 days, took part in 23 battles, and has 18 kills. The most powerful opponent he vanquished was a brigand raider. Good loot, bro. That sucked. I was just walking through the forest and got ambushed. Kyoko got more than down, unfortunately. So here's basically what happens. This is why Battle Brothers is so hard, right? Because it's day 40, things have been going pretty well, and then we just lost two back-to-back. -back. We just lost Kyoko and then whoever the hell else we just let go, who didn't die but got fired. And so when you start losing, like, level 5 brothers, which are, like, your highest level, and the rest of your party is smashed to bits, it gets difficult to replace them because the game keeps getting more difficult. 
and the challenge keeps going up. But you're losing your experience. It's basically like the World War II problems, you know? You're losing all your veterans, and you can only keep replacing them with greenhorns for so long. Wait, do they have, um... I might not have a choice. They have extremely expensive tools, which I have to buy. I have no choice. Because we need to keep repairs up. You basically have to ex hire really expensive guys mid to late game to deal with the higher costs, yeah. You can train up one or two people at a time, especially if you give them like the education bonus of 35% bonus XP. But that's why you end up getting into this kind of like trouble spot here. If you lose a couple of your, your higher level dudes. Yeah, they're all they're all still beat. I'm gonna keep moving in case those bandits are on my tail. And I just can't see them. I think they I think they stopped. Okay. Um Good value for these dudes. Bought for 334 sell for 479. Got some cash. Don't want to buy these tools though. I will however sell some things. What's that famed armor? We picked it up from some unholds that we did beat. Alvar the Pillager's Harness. It's just 34 fatigue. It's hard to tell who's who right now. Dude, our company is like... <laughs> seen better days, bro. <laughs> they ain't feeling good. There is a temple here. It's actually probably a good idea to just pony up some cash up front for the one. Hey, KJAO11, catch you on the flip side, bro. Make sure to get some good rest and come back <laughs> strong. And don't worry, if you gotta go, it's all good. <laughs> GG, pump it. Yeah, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And all us, Shrach. You were so close. You were so close to perfect there, bro. Alright, melee skill, melee defense. Probably just get the resolve up. Give him gifted. And then go HP... Melee defense, melee skill, yeah, 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 yeah. Strong boy, that is a pretty good character, to be honest. Okay, we need to go find some more tools that are affordable, because we're not doing any of our repairs right now. They've still got a lot of healing to do. Soundtrack is this? Oh, it went to Assassin's Creed Origins. Ah. I knew I recognized it from somewhere. Sure, why not? Why not? But yeah, we need food. These tools are insane, dude. I can't afford them, but I think I have to buy them. Feels kind of bad. But also, we lost two of our spearmen. Apparently, being a spearman is a dangerous job.
I need that twelfth person on the on the roster. They're still like not even fully healed yet, man. Not fully healed, not fully repaired. We took a beating. Three skull, two skull. Disappearing villagers, rebuilding effort, and recently raided. Everything's too expensive. My question then is... Does anyone need... I don't think anyone can wear this 34 fatigue armor. So much. It's so hefty. It'd have to be just a fatigue god. Like just Dude, really... Jam and Ben, you're a legend. 248 gifted subs. That's insane, bro. Thanks for spreading the love and support in the community. Let's keep the hype up and pump it. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! All right, Miss Lissa Day, we're decking you out a little bit more. I don't know if anybody else can wear these. Home desktop can. You can wear the nasal, because you're actually pretty strong. We really shouldn't need these anymore. At least not that many of them. Got two boar spears. I need some recruits! Gizbert, come with me. Gizbert, you suck. <laughs> Oh, Gisbert. 43 melee skill, dude. I love how I just sold the armor that I could have given him. I don't know why I just sold that armor. <laughs> Can I buy it back, please? What's the stat below resolve? That's initiative. It's 114. He's quick. Super fast. I don't know why I sold that. It was cheap armor, but I don't know why I sold it. Let's do a two skull. I got a shipment. Escort a caravan. What could go wrong, chat? You go looking for KJ. The mercenary had taken quite the injury last you saw. The man, however, is in high spirits. He turns to you, taking a break from sharpening some steel. Need something, sir? You inquire about his injury. He shrugs. I don't die easy. I ate a lot of them pointy orange things when I was young. KJ no longer suffers from a broken nose. Yeah, they're, uh... Dude, Godfiend was on the brink of death, apparently. I feel like it's been... We've been walking for days and they're still recuperating. If we get attacked on this, hopefully it's easy. It's a two-skull quest. So I don't know what to expect on the road. Maybe nothing if we're lucky and then they just feed us. We pay our troops and heal while we go back north. It's all good. Jam and Ben and Mostly Laws, thanks for the gift subs, by the way. Iron Bar also thanks for over two years of sub. Turtle, easy fight. Oh yeah, super easy. Just debated. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks again, Turtle and Sun Laser. Oh, they came for me afterward. We should be able to win this pretty easy. Some orc boys. Orc lads. 
I didn't mean to put these two guys together. Get that guy, man. Yo, get that guy. Oh, that guy is super dead. One casualty already, bro. That way those guys can split up a bit. I forgot the shield wall. We'll be punished next turn. I actually was. That was the guy I forgot the shield wall. Great. <laughs> Miss Lissaday. Just block it, Miss Lissaday. It was only a 35% chance to hit. Come on. You're supposed to be better than that. All right, we're starting to feel pretty confident. That confidence boost is plus 10% to all of our uh, combat skills. Don't throw things. Don't do it. I'm gonna go up to this guy, because he's gonna have to switch weapons. Hulk misses the day. Yeah, I say let's uh -huh. take Miss Elisaday. It's Etal Chad, not Etal Cheese. Um But hey, I'll take it. Thanks for being here, Broski. Let's keep the fun going and pump those numbers up. Yeah. Got some pipes. It never gets old. Okay, for the record, he thought he was saying, yeah, Y-E-A-H. Why did he keep going? Because he's just got that much energy, chat. I don't know what to tell you there. He's just really excited to be here. <laughs> the Chad balloon losing his air. <laughs> I think we just hold the line again. Shield brothers. Together strong. Oh. Okay, Mrs. Day might be dead because the AI is hitting another 25% chance, you know. As they do. And I miss my 72. You know, as I do. That's just how it works. That dude's armor, though, dude. Miss Listen Day, I had... Oh, man. Come on. Don't do that to Gizbert. Gizbert's dead. That was, that was my new guy, my new friend. He just got murdered. Taken out. Now they're gonna try and take out Kaibo, bro. Meanwhile, I can't even take out this one orc warrior, dude. Miss Lizzie Day, you got a shield up. Oh, you're bleeding out? Oh, well, then you're just going to die next turn, I guess. How much is bleeding damage? Blocked.
you have one hope, and it's Landrich landing a shield bash, pushing the guy away. Or we kill him first. Those are your two hopes. How many how many mercs does it take to kill one orc warrior is the question, man. Ooh, I can also do a nice split, hit both of them. Yeah, you know, or just whiff both of them. That's fine too. Straight through the chest armor. Come on! Bodo got hit twice through the kite shield and all the way through the armor to almost dead just from one orc young? Come on, bro. This is silly. All right, can we just kill this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of forgot that Miss List Day had uh, a bleed. Kind of forgot. But I don't think I had anyone with bandages right there. I think my bandages were the people who are going last or first. Unfortunately. Miss Lisa Day, I was gonna Yo, fight. Narfwak. I'm not quite sure what blue means, but hey, thanks for dropping by, bro. Let's keep the party going and pump it up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, game! Dude, this is just six orcs, man. Like, it's like just some orc young. It's not that crazy. One orc warrior and some orc young? It's not even that hard of a fight. It's a two, this is two skull quest, man. Like, I'm tired of missing every single 50-50. And he's got permanent collapse lung. Okay, so Bodo's gone too. Gisbert sucked. Miss Lissa Day was here for a while. 20 days, 9 battles, 2 kills. You were kind of just a body. Bodo's the only one that I'm actually pissed about. Because now I have to let him go for minus 40% fatigue. Because he was actually like a sick character. I'm like, out of the rest of these characters, I don't know. This is just not, this is not a good mercenary group anymore. I don't think. There's nobody in the party now that's like... Potentially gonna be god tier. Like, Bodo had three star hit points. One star melee skill. Has a 90% chance to survive. But it doesn't matter if you get collapsed lung. Yeah, I've gotten all the worst injuries, Talu. I've had two people uh, get down and both of them had injuries that we couldn't recover from. I actually had three people get down. I guess one of them... One of them had missing nose, which isn't the worst. So one out of three was okay. But yeah, Gustav has nothing special. Godfiend has a lot of melee skill. Godfiend's probably like the best overall character in the party. Landrich is pretty solid as well. So it's like Godfiend, Landrich, and Bodo. Now Bodo's gone. Spoons is just a body. Rudolph's pretty decent ranger. But yeah, we're just we're just falling really behind now because we just lost like a bunch of people. We're low on money. Everybody's wounded. It's hard to keep up, man. It's hard to keep up in the mid game when that starts happening. Um. 
I don't remember. Zone of con leave a zone of control without triggering free attacks is awesome for rangers. It's so good. Go little trading company. At best, he can stay as a backline. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta let him go. Boop. Boop. And this is... Look at our... Do you see the problem? We have four people front line, and if you count Kaibo, five. And then four back. All our front line's dead. <laughs> We're missing... Um, Three? Three front line are all dead. You dismissed him in the middle of the woods. I'm not even giving pay for this mission. I paid him compensation. That's all he's gonna get. Back to Phil's moves. I'm running out of money, chat. We're gonna go broke. Unless they... Unless they get there and pay me right now. I'm gonna lose all my money. Two unholds just roaming around. Things are getting wild, man. <sighs> A little too wild. Feathered cap. Oh yeah, I forgot about the war. I should have used the warhounds. I'm getting a little sloppy because I'm getting a little agitated. It's easy to do. You get in a hurry. You get in a hurry. But yeah, I feel I feel like we got beat up a bit here. I would simply have reinflated the lump. Sometimes. Sometimes your brothers are just not as good as you want them to be. And they let you down when you need them the most. Literally just breathe, dude. Why is it zooming in when you do that? <laughs> what do you have to say about that, Etel Chad? Hey, Tuna Man, breathing is important, bro. Thanks for the reminder. Gotta keep those oxygen levels up to fuel our gaming greatness. So, take a deep breath, relax, and let's pump it. Yeah. <laughs> he seems a little more stable now. He seems a bit more stable. Could just be anecdotal. Little, A little less simlish at the tip of his tongue. But thanks again, Jamie Ben, for the gifts over the French Invader from a little bit ago. Um, give a eulogy for our fallen mercs in Battle Brothers. Always appreciate the wise words of Chad. He's thinking. Oh man, bros. <laughs> we gather here today to remember our fallen mercs in Battle Brothers. They fought with bravery and honor, and though they're gone, their spirit lives on. Let's pay our respects and keep charging forward. Pump it. Asher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why he's saying pump it. And now that I think about it, when we could have just made a pump it bro. But Pump It Bro is so, like Pump It Dude, is GR3 Foxhound. You're a legend with that 42 month substreak. 
Let's murder those fools in Battle Brothers. <laughs> Thanks for the vibes, bro. Good morning to you, too. And let's have an epic day. Pump it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Parentheses in Battle Brothers. Yeah, I feel like he... Pump it is somewhere in between Alien Please and Chad. I don't know if he should be saying pump it. Okay. Anyway. Scarecrows, Grey Fox Hound, thank you for the late night subs. It's not that. Uh, yo. Gertrude's, uh, Borinina's, the Krina's dish. No, uh, the Scarecrow fights the Oral Tusphere. Eight of Tate. Um, so. Thanks for the 19 month sub, bro. Um, we're all about that pumping here. So let's keep the energy high and the excitement flowing. So, oh, pump it. Yeah. <laughs> anger. Just stop. Us. Just stop talking. You're done. You said everything you wanted to say. <laughs> you good? He's, he is decidedly not good. He did his best. I might do some more work on Etau Chad. Um, and, and do do some tests to kind of tweak him to be where he needs to be. But Chad, I'm a, I think I'm 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 gonna call it a little early tonight. I think this campaign is kind of just treading water at this point. Having to, I'd have to grind a lot to try to rebuild these brothers back up. Uh, we never got the the Michael Jordan that carries the team. It's just kind of gonna be like. We only have a thousand bucks, so I pretty much just have to grind some quests, get some money, hire some more bros, while the game keeps getting harder around us. We got we had some bad RNGs today. But also, like, the first game today just really broke my spirit a little bit, because I just want I just want something new that's also fun, and I'm trying different things, I'm trying new things, and um, apparently games are bad now. I don't know if anyone knew this, but apparently video games are bad. This campaign is definitely not pumping it. Yeah, it's not pumping it. Battle Brothers breaks a man, yeah. So, uh, there might be a stream tomorrow. There might not, because I'm just looking for something new to do. I'll play some more Tarkov and stuff, just as a comfort game, because it's something that I know that I like and enjoy, but I'm actively seeking new things. What did you try first? I tried um, Destroyer the U-Boat Hunter today, and it was just information overload and also chaotic energy but like not the good kind of chaotic energy and uh, confusing in more ways than one thank you for the streamy dog the streams brought me so much serotonin on a difficult day yeah i mean i'm i'm i still had fun uh playing battle brothers and making this the ai is always a good time but i think i want to call it early tonight and spend a little time because uh, the last few days, especially like Hearts of Iron and stuff, it's been a little bit of time with Alice and Midas and the Katos. And then uh, think about coming. I'm trying to find something to do tomorrow. It might be something else new because I'm just like, I want to find something that is, you know, new to us. That we could jam in for a while. And we tried Enshrouded yesterday, and tried Destroyer today, and we'll keep trying some new things. But it'd be nice if something would just reach out and grab me. Find that diamond in the rough, maybe. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today, chat. I hope you enjoyed. There was, there was definitely some good laughs with the <clears throat> AI silliness as there always is, and we still have to make the Randy random AI at some point, and I want to, like, I feel like I can do Chad better, so maybe I'll tweak him a little bit off-stream. He's, he's like, 50% toward where I want him to be. He's not quite where I want him. So maybe we'll give him a different personality. Maybe CDDA. Is this the part where Streamer says he wants to try something new that will reach out and grab him, and Chatter suggests game that streamer has already streamed multiple times. I think we've hit that part. 
Be well, streamer. Enjoy the rest and good company. Thanks, Bouncy Bear. Did I come at the end? Yeah, we're just going to call it early tonight for Dato. The game, I got beat up a little bit by the games. The games beat me up. And the AI has been unruly. Play Destiny 2. Why? So that I can hate myself? Games 2, Etal 0. There's uh, I think it's more than two. What did we play last week? I guess last week was Tarkov and Hearts of Iron. I saw that there was a new Hearts of Iron DLC announced, but that's not till March. Isaac is always fun, bro. You've got Yo, some... Durf on <laughs> turf. No worries, bro. We just warming up. <laughs> Gonna turn this game around real quick. Get ready for the epic comeback, bruh. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Thank you, Chad. I mean, he's raising my spirits. I feel empowered. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like... He, Chad's a good guy. He's a good guy. He wants the best for us. Best hype man. Maybe we need to give War Tales another try? I didn't really enjoy War Tales. Chad, we haven't... Have we had a best game of 2024 yet? I don't think we have. We're, the... the the top three is empty so far for 2024. 2023 had some great games. It's been a long month. Yeah, it's been a long month. So far, so far I got nothing. But I'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled and uh, try to find something to do tomorrow. But I'll, I'll update the exclamation stream command either way. We're off to, like, a great, like, the, the problem is the subathon was so good that now I'm struggling to kind of, like, fill in the void post-subathon, I feel like. I'm trying to find the fun again. Something, something that'll keep me coming back for a little while. I don't need a forever game or even a new staple. Just something to get wrapped up in and lost in for three to seven streams would be great. But all I can do is keep trying new things and see what happens. The Marvel Snap. I need the Marvel Snap effect. Tarkov is addicting, but it's not new. I am enjoying Tarkov a lot, though. What about when Zomboid updates? I mean, maybe. I'm just like, that's not new. <laughs> Chesh is like, what about what about my other game? I don't know, dude. Listen, what, I'm just saying when a game gets 200 plus hours on my playlist, it's got to be very, very, very special and highly replayable for me to go above like that 200 hour mark. The pro here's the problem with Project Zomboid. Project Zomboid is like two degrees of separation away from Door Fortress. In that you like the most fun part of Project Zomboid and Door Fortress is the very first portion of the game where nothing is set up. And then it devolves into, at least in Zomboid's case, this hyper grind once you have like a working car in a small house where everything is like fast forward while reading and then it feels like work yeah and then it feels like work once you settle in and have to just like grind your stat points and it gets very overwhelming
Have you tried Dot Age? I haven't, but I'm not... I don't really like Colony Sims. Is that weird to say? Because just liking RimWorld doesn't mean I like Colony Sims. Like, I think RimWorld is good, but I can't think of another Colony Sim that I like. Unless you're just saying, like, Banished. Um... I like Farthest Frontier, which is not really a colony sim. It's a city builder slash colony sim. Frostpunk 2 is coming. Yeah, I didn't really like Frostpunk 1 that much. So I just don't think I really like colony sims because I've played almost all of them. And there's like I, two that I think are games that I love, you know? Skull and Bones comes out in February. And on that note, chat, good night. <laughs> Clan Folk. Clan Folk's awesome, but it's just not a 300 Yo, hour Kalfushi, game. Yo, Frostpunk 2. Uh, that's rad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see what icy challenges they bring this time. Gonna build the ultimate frigid city, Broski. Uh, Sam. Let's do this. Gorshash. Shos. Shos. Yeah, uh, so. Orbico for I just want a game that's on the same scale as, like, Diablo 4 coming out this year. Hopefully there'll be some TPD games that get a locked-in release date. Like, looking forward to... Some of the most fun I had last year was getting excited about Diablo 4 before it came out. And then doing a full playthrough of Diablo 1, 2, and 3. Like, I, I loved doing that. That got me really hyped. Unfortunately, the fun only lasted for like a month. Um, but hey, it was, a, it was a great time leading up to there. Have you tried Baldur's Gate 3? I did. I got 220 hours in with like three different campaigns. And then I started playing Cyberpunk. And then I'll go back to uh, Baldur's Gate eventually. I loved watching you do that with Diablo. Yeah, it'd be cool if there was like... I don't know. I feel like I need a motivating factor to go back and play the cool old games. I, I, I like when they're building blocks that work up towards something and not just for their own sake. Barely saw Act 2. Yeah, I barely saw Act 2. It's not going anywhere, though. They're still patching it. I keep working my way up to Act 2 in Baldur's Gate and then starting over with a new character. That's fair. Um, Act 2 is also just very different structurally. And then Act 3 is even more different structurally. Microsoft Flight Sim isn't going anywhere either. Chat, stop talking about Microsoft Flight Sim. They're releasing a new game this year. 20, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. We will play it when it is new. And when it comes out... But it is not, it's neither out nor playable yet. I think most people just don't know they're making a new game. I never played Diablo, so that playthrough was a blast to watch. It was a lot of fun to do, too. I, I would like to go and play Fallout 2. The problem is it's twice as long as Fallout 1. <laughs> and the problem with that is I want to play Fallout 2, but I don't want to have to read Fallout 2. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, doing the voices for every single line of dialogue just burns me out so fast. Even though I had a lot of fun, like, playing the campaign. I wish I got the <clears throat> voice acting treatment that our good friends at Disco Elysium got. Aren't those voiced? Nope. They have voices that sometimes speak. Get an AI to read it? I don't think you can translate that. It can't read text on the screen. 
and you can't copy and paste from a video game. But anyways, gamers, all we gotta do is be patient and uh, keep trying some different things. So I'll look, I'm gonna go back into the Steam library and maybe I purchased some things ages ago in the rear view mirror that I forgot about and I can reinstall those and try those things out. So I'm gonna do a deep dive of my Steam library tonight and see what's up, if there's anything down there. Okay, tell the stream good night and say bye to chat. Yo, Gibraltar contingency. No, not, not reading them. text from a screen. That's not. That's like some next level tech, bro. <laughs> Can't imagine how they do it, but as long as I can read my gains, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I wanted you to do. Close, though. <laughs> I missed the new AI. You did, yes. All right, bros and broskies. It's been a sick stream. Thanks for hanging out and dropping those likes and subs. <laughs> Keep living that awesome life. Stay swole. Catch you next time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to leave the likes on the stream, I guess. And uh, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow, but check the exclamation stream command. If I get, if I get like... If I, if I just can't find anything, I'm not going to force it. I, I agree with what um, we got rated by Splat earlier. Splat tweeted something to that effect. Like, if I don't have anything to play, I'm just not going to work that day from here on out. There are so few engaging, exciting things anymore in gaming. Everything feels incredibly risk tolerant, chasing a trend or another more popular game's wake. That's uh, Splat's words, not mine. Gamers and streamers are disenfranchised with the current palette of menu, current menu of games. And that was from today, Chad. Those aren't even my words. I hope you guys have something fun that you enjoy, though. I envy that. I, I enjoy Tarkov. I just can't stream it every day because I'm not built that way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I haven't been, like, a shooter streamer. And um, I love the game, but it's like my body. I'm, again, it's I'm a Chad in the body of a rat. And so when I finish a Tarkov stream, I'm like, whew, I don't know how people are doing that for 12-plus hours, man. I'm tired because I'm, like, having to pay laser-focused attention for the entire stream to make sure I don't get one-tapped in the skull. I'm giving it, like, my 100% try-hard, super sweaty. You know what I mean? I haven't I haven't built up those muscles yet. So even though it's been really fun to stream and play, I can't do it every day. I'm too weak. Sudoku stream sequel? I still need to beat Minesweeper. Maybe we'll try that at some point. But yeah, the uh, Tarkov's the thing that's got my attention right now. That's where it's at for me. You describe my ADHD experience in a nutshell. Yeah, I'm like, okay, sweaty tryhard mode. Okay, I should go do something else for a little bit and come back. All right, guys. Good night. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for saying hi. I'm going to send you to the void now. Get out of here. Actually, you're not going to go to the void. We're going to go on a raid. Let's go say what's up to Hippo, who is playing some Enshrouded. Fellow gamer friends who are playing and enjoying Enshrouded, go say hi to Hippo. He's been streaming for seven hours. I don't know how much longer he's going to be streaming. But uh, go say what's up, okay? Uh, you guys can do like an Etal Chad raid, all right? 
chads. I'll probably see you tomorrow. But if not, a couple days. Uh, I'll, I'll try and find something for tomorrow. We'll find something fun to do again. We need a new stream game where everybody gets into it. Where I accidentally convert hundreds of people to play Marvel Snap. And, and get them addicted to a new thing they didn't expect. Good night, gamers. See you next time. I'll see you over on Hippo's channel. Goodbye.